Last time, on his millionth adventures, the party finish off their journey to the High Temple in search of Duke Braun, arriving late into the night. Upon meeting with the feeble lord, they are made aware of an infliction that has been wearing him down since their first meeting. Quickly, it is explained to the Golden Hearts that the Duke has been seeing visions of the future that spell the demise of his millionth as a whole, assuming they have been brought on by the mysterious power of Toradan. Allowing the party to glimpse these visions, they are met with the sight of Toradan himself rising from Grave Lake, showcasing the immense destruction that he will bring upon his return. After witnessing this, the party attempts to offer their assistance any way they can, to which the Duke confesses he's been hitting roadblocks in his pursuit of knowledge. Ending the conversation for the night with the agreement to continue in the morning, the party departed back towards the Sliver of the Moon Inn. Arriving back at their tavern, they are met with the pleasurable company of Sir Alum, where he informs Lord Valoran that he is intent on escorting him back to Lord Solomon. Following a brief discourse back and forth, he finally agrees to harass them in the morning and leave the party alone for the night. Moving through the night, the Golden Hearts keep their promise of following up with the Duke by heading up to his castle. Their second conversation focuses solely on how to proceed forward, inquiring after where the remaining pieces of Toradan may be, and how they might secure them before the Dark Lord. Leaving the Duke for the final time, the Golden Hearts are given what information has been gathered about their targets, and make preparations to depart Kralin. Deciding that dealing with Valoran's family troubles was still the most pressing matter, the party set a route towards Bronze Shards to facilitate their passing under the mountains into the Folk Kingdom. As they travel towards Freesight City, Jarek and Thor dig into the mysteries surrounding Buffy, discovering that what they assume to be Thor's parents are somehow connected to the old beast. Debating what this might mean into the night, the party prepares to forge ahead to Freesight City. So, after that night passes, um, you know, kind of learning the various odd things about uh, the figure that had been drawn and Thor's lineage or what that might entail. Um, you guys, you know, find your way to sleep for the night and then proceed to travel throughout the next day. Um, you're maybe traveling through this day. You'll probably reach Freesight City uh, like tomorrow morning. So as you're settling down for the night, um, again, making camp as it's like kind of routine sets in, you know, Adam doing his thing and all of you setting up your various uh, beds for the evening. Um, Sparky always finding kind of a fascination with the campfire while you set up. Um, this night is a little different, however, um, as Adam, like halfway through setting up everything, you notice, you know, all of you periodically as you're, you know, kind of idly watching everything happen, um, you notice Adam taking things that you haven't seen out of the cart and kind of setting them up around the campsite in an odd way that just a little bit different than usual. Um, but you all kind of find yourself in your campsite more or less, you know, the night kind of setting in um, just off the, the main road. Valorant. Go ahead. Uh, Va Valorant, did you ask Adam to uh, do anything special? No, I... I haven't spoken with him in some time. No, oh, I've been noticing kind of furtively moving about. Just wasn't sure what uh, what may be going on in there. Ask him, Adam. He's like shifting oh, well, uh, a kind of medium-sized barrel for his figure kind of across the dirt by like wiggling it on his feet back and forth. Um, like mid-motion as you call it, kind of stops, like looks over. Yes? Adam, um, I mean, this doesn't really affect me because you're the one doing all the lifting, but I notice you're pulling out more things from the cart than normal. He kind of like looks around and looks at you and goes, I, um, you know what? No, that's, that's fine. I'll roll with it. Okay. Yeah. Have at it, Adam. Just make sure you click Sparky Juice. <laughs> so you see him continuing his, his mission, whatever that may be. All right. Then. <clears throat> um, so, um, what is Adam doing? What do you mean? Isn't he doing what he normally does? Well, he normally keeps things in the cart. Uh, 
we'll figure out what he's doing. Okay. I'll just walk up to Adam. <laughs> As you uh, walk up, he kind of like gets the barrel in position, like looks over at you. He's like, Thor, I, I have a request for you, if that is all right. For uh, for me? What, oh, what? Well, I have a request for Buffy, but I wanted to ask you first. Oh boy, what, what do you want Buffy to do? I have been preparing something, and um, Buffy has been helping me with it. Um... And I would just like your permission to have him help. Wait, how has Buffy been helping you or something? It is a surprise. Well, how am I supposed to tell you yes or no if you just tell me it's a surprise? That doesn't really help me make my decision very well. Thor, I'll make a deal with you. If you say yes, I will thoroughly entertain you. Sure, why not? Bobby! <laughs> Bobby, who was like kind of slumped, like waiting to like for you to like fall asleep with him, kind of like shoves his weight up, begins like kind of slumbering over to you. Yeah, I know. I don't know what's happening. Uh, whatever the tiny man wants, just I don't know. Follow along if you feel like it. If you don't, it really doesn't matter to me. You could eat him, honestly. But I think we pay him, so maybe don't eat him. Actually, <laughs> never mind. Carry so on. That, as Buffy like comes over, just kind of like looks at you and then looks at Adam. Adam's like, um, you know, everyone's kind of still idly sitting out through sitting throughout the campsite. Um, as Adam kind of like claps his hands and like looks around at you all and he goes, um, Golden Hearts, if you would like to uh, gather around, I have a an event for this evening. If you would like to partake. Does it involve alcohol? It certainly can, Master Roly. Then count me in. You gotta like looks around at everyone else to see who is uh coming to gather around. I am I'm already sitting down just <laughs> waiting. Yeah, I'll play. Okay. Jarek, are you joining in? Mm. Jerk would have a frown on his face. Adam, there's there can only be one room for a guy that sings in this in this group. I will not ruin your evening by singing, Jerick. Nah, 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 fair enough. Jerick, plop down. So Adam begins to like gently guide you guys the various like stumps and rocks that are kind of set uh, around the campfire to kind of put you all in a semi-coordinated uh, position um, and then he like begins like shoving the lids of the barrels off and they're far enough away at this point that you can't quite see inside also because of the dimness of the light um, still kind of keeping them a secret but he kind of like steps to the fire kind of like does like a whole little almost like showmanship kind of like arm holding out gesture he goes golden huts um I know that it may be odd, and I've brought it up before, but um, the travels that I've had with you have been some of the most exciting travels that I've seen across all of Ismilioth, and I wanted to show you all my appreciation for the good times you've shown me by showing you all a, a good time, maybe giving us something to relax and enjoy um, during these darker times. So, <laughs> Master Roly, I don't know if you remember the... Um, the rules that you gave me when we first became quartermaster of the Golden Hearts, but um, hopefully that might jog your memory. And then as he does it, he like does a little like spaky, and there's like a long silence with no reply. He kind of like looks around. It's like spaky, and you see like the the newtling's head kind of poking up over the wagon over on the other side of the the camp, kind of like squinting over. He goes. Spocky! Now! It's like, ow, oh, ow! Oh. And then, um, as the newtling head kind of dips down beneath the wagon, you see wheels of cheese 
tipping over the edge of the wagon and then rolling slowly across the dirt towards you guys. There's like one, like a, eh, and you see it like hit the dirt and kind of roll past you. And then another wheel of cheese comes over the, the edge and it begins to roll past you again. And then Adam goes around to the various barrels he had set aside and begins pulling out what looks to be like weird barbarian-esque kind of ragged clothing um as he like grabs the first set he kind of like holds it out to you Rolly, and it reveals that it's what looks to be kind of like a a quickly thrown together wolf like pelt um with like kind of badly crafted teeth uh like for the head of it and like holds it out and he's like Rolly, quick put it on put it on He then goes around handing out these these outfits to each individual of the Golden Hearts, looking very, very excited as Sparky begins to, like, crawl, crawl, crawl over the edge of the wagon and kind of dip down, following the, the path of the wheels of cheese. Adam then eventually, right in the middle of the campsite, just strips down to nothing and then throws on his own wolf pelt, kind of, like, covering himself almost in a, like, vaguely seductive manner as he looks around at you all and he goes... I have been told this is how the Golden Hots celebrate. And then he begins, like, kind of trotting around the campfire. And then looks over at Buffy and he goes... And Buffy just looks at him. He's like... That's fine. That's fine. And then he continues to keep trying to get you all to dance around the campfire. Roly, what the hell did you tell him? I... I'm assuming my voice would be muffled through the wolf mask. Um, I must have been really drunk. What am I looking at? <laughs> he kind of stops for a uh, moment, noticing that no one is interacting with him. He looks a little bit dejected. Like, looks over at Rolly. He's like, Master Rolly, you... you I think jokingly told me when we first came on that dancing around a campfire like wolves with wheels of cheese was the the common practice of the Golden Hearts, but I see maybe the, the joke may have been forgotten. Well, there's no reason we can't make um, new traditions. Well, fine. And then I'll start dancing with Adam. He very eagerly begins his dancing yet again, now with the, the solid amount of satisfaction that Rolly is joining in with him. Sparky just kind of like idly following around in like a circle around the campfire as this all goes on. Jarek would join in uh, and probably try to outdance the other two. You want to give me a performance check there, Jarek? And now it would be a competition because... <laughs> I'm not going to try to outsing Jarek, but I certainly can outdance him. Okay, well, let's have uh, performance checks. Let's go. Let's give Adam a roll. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Come on. Uh, I believe in you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, as the three of you begin to dance, Jarek again, for no really well explained reason, is incredibly light on his very heavy feet and finds this like odd almost animalistic gelatin cube dance that really works for him and just flows naturally as he makes his way around the fire adam kind of taking some inspiration from these movements kind of mimicking his his favorite pal of the golden hearts as rolly kind of follows along behind not quite used to being a a dancing wolf for the most part but it's it's passable Oh, uh, Lord Val, what what am I looking at? Another piece of Rolly's advice to someone gone awry. <laughs> Would I have heard that? I, I said at the top of my lungs. <laughs> <laughs> I would try to get Valorant to join in the dance. Uh, as, as soon as someone comes toward him with a handout, he gets up and leaves the circle to go study no, the Valorant. Play notes. V Valorant, no. The least you could do is at least teach us how to dance 
as you would in court. Exactly. So that way we don't look like... That's not the least I could do. This is the least I could do. And he turns his back. <laughs> we should bring the party to his tent. No, really, we just have to inebriate him. Thor! Thor! What? Oh, JD, what? What? Can you please stop jiggling like that? Oh, please. No, it's... Okay, look, it's... I saw some kind of cheese dish baked once that was very jiggly, and if you just... That, you know, that's not the point. Mm -hmm. Thor, join, join with us. We haven't had good times in such a long... such a long spell. You know, JD, I have a great time every night when it's semi-quiet and your snoring is only mildly annoying and I can just cuddle with Buffy and fall asleep. I will watch you do whatever is happening here. And if it makes you a little happier inside, sure. But I, I, I will not jiggle with you. Well said, Mr. Thor. So is he? How is how are you dancing with Jarek Thor? I'm not. <laughs> As you um deject reject Jarek, um Adam will kind of like stop his little dancing next to you. Adam like comes up to like just above your knee. Like he is a very small man compared to you, and so he like reaches into the barrel that was kind of in front of you and it takes him like a solid couple seconds to pull out this like much larger fake wolfskin dressing and he kind of like drapes it over himself and then like kind of shuffles over to you under this pile of fake fur and kind of like nudges you he goes come on come on it will be fun uh i'm i'm having fun watching i i what what even you are you doing Thor, you will look you will look the best out of any of them. I always uh, I always look the best out of any of them, so I don't need a, a fur pelt to tell me that. Buffy's getting into it, and he like looks over and Buffy's just like looking at you two with like absolutely no amusement on the bear's face. I think Buffy and I have a stronger connection than I really realized. You know, I should probably go dance with Buffy right now. Maybe I'll go do that. Realizing that his fabulous plan has not gone as successful as he hoped, Adam kind of, like, drops his head, kind of shoves the the drapes, more or less, onto the ground. It's like, all right, I, I get it. And then he kind of meanders back no, towards no, the wagon. No, no, this is quite fun, really. Uh, it just needs more alcohol, and um, it always thought that we were a bit wasteful with cups when we had perfectly good wheels of cheese. So I'll take up my knife and I'll scoop out a hole in the cheese and uh, fill it up with with ale and drink out of the cheese and pass it to Jarek. New traditions. Roly, um, you know what? We're on no. the road. <laughs> so be it. Uh, and how big are these wheels of cheese? They're like full <laughs> wheels of cheese. So like, this is a pretty athletic ability to drink from this wheel of cheese. Because that's like what, like two feet across? I think. Yeah. It... <laughs> it's a big thing. You know? that, that for Roly, it wouldn't have been. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll it really has a lot more muscle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you have I'll the thing to prop it, it up against. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, here. <laughs> I'll put it on top of my head. And so he can just kind of pivot and fulcrum it off of my head. There you go. Classy. <laughs> so, with a, uh, a successful draft from that, um, I, uh, I think I would like to attempt to cast Charm Person on Buffy despite the fact that Buffy is not a humanoid. Okay. And that's a wisdom saving throw? It is. Uh, 14. What are you trying to parlay to parlay? 
convey to uh, Buffy. Dance, Buffy, dance. <laughs> so as you reach forth your magical ability and send this suggestion um, over to Buffy, you see him kind of look at you and your eyes connect for a moment. And then Buffy like looks over at Thor, then looks over at Jarek, kind of tilts his head a little bit, and then begins like kind of letting his shoulders like rock back and forth a little bit, like still laying down, still staying in place, but just kind of like jiving back and forth ever so slightly. What did you just do? What, no, what did you just do to my bear? I saw you did some little, and then and what you just told my bear to dance. What? Did it, why? It's called spreading joy, Thor. Mm, sounds like magic to me. <laughs> well, I assure well, you, I am quite magical when I spread my joy. No, oh, jeez. <laughs> so Adam, taking what he can get, uh, basically uses Rolly and Jarek to spearhead the, the new ritual of the group um, late into the evening, um, coming up with different things that the, could potentially be passed down in the new tradition and whatnot. Um, Kind of refusing that uh, it went nearly as bad as it did, yes. Real quick, uh, can I get some insight on Adam to see if what he's actually doing is involved in a genuine magical ritual? To sure. see if he has, get some, uh, <laughs> just in case this is like a worship of a dark lord. <laughs> Um, to the best yeah. of your knowledge, which is vast, um, no, there, there's nothing that really stands out to you as any sort of ritual that includes wheels of cheese, fake fur, and disappointed gnomes. Did I really say that? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> I must be wrong. <laughs> so the night will carry on with a little bit of merriment out of the, the few who participate. Uh, but eventually it would wind down, camp would kind of return more or less to its normal functioning um, as the night goes by. But eventually you would all, you know, however you find your way to sleep, will find yourself waking up the next morning, um, Adam and Sparky being in the wagon, and, you know, Thor and Buffy, I still imagine, sleeping almost in a pile more or less. Um, but yeah, you know, it's a, it's maybe eight, nine, sun's just kind of getting up into the sky. Uh, you hear a few kind of passerby, uh, like travelers and wagons kind of going by on the road. It's a little bit far off. Um, you're about half a day's travel from Freesight City. Um, but yeah, so new day. Uh, Jerk would have slept uh, not quite at the mouth of Valoran's tent, but like just next to it. Um, okay. Ready to... Uh, I guess you could say bombard him with uh, inquiries once Valorant is up and about. Okay. Well, he, he pokes his head out in pretty short order. Bleary. Gwinting. V Valorant, Valorant, there you are. Morning. Uh, hey, um, I need to, I need to talk to you. Still a little drunk from last night, but uh, I, I need. I have these notes. We need to go over, and I got to ask you a few questions. All right. And he sort of starts his morning routine while letting Jarek follow him around. And Jarek would just be like, I "Have the notes in hand, you know." Uh, get the sleep out of his eyes, and so uh, Valor and I don't. I don't know if I mentioned this to you. I've been using the um, the crown to watch you when we're asleep, um, and I've just been uh, trying to get a handle on handle on you, um, and and be you know a little less uncouth, if you will. I don't even think I'm using that word right, but uh, I think I've heard you say that. Um, so I would like, uh, if possible, some assistance in acting a little more noble. Uh, but mainly for these notes, and he'll uh, kind of pass over the notes to you. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think we need to start cracking this and see if there's anything that we can figure out that is relevant to our current histories and locations that we might be able to find. It's the it's and the so- Torban notes, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, I was already looking these over last night while you were doing whatever you were doing. Oh, excellent, excellent. I, um, I've only browsed them, so I haven't really read them, but uh, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, did you gain any insight? So here's my, here's my history check on the note to Master Cedric. Mm-hmm. The Knights of the West. Uh, yeah, and House okay. Lanamids. Okay. Okay. Um, so House Lanamis does not bring up anything, uh, any sort of thoughts or tidbits that you might have collected at some point. Um, Knights of the West distinctly does, though. Um, the feeling you get, it's almost like this kind of nagging feeling where you can picture in your mind that you have read this in a book somewhere, but you can't quite remember in what context. Like, you can actually visualize the paper and the writing and the words, and you know that you've interacted with it, but you can't figure out from where. I've seen this phrase before, Knights of the West. And the land to the west that's separated from the Empire is my country. You don't you know. Already. You don't think maybe a piece of it is hidden in folk, then? It sounds as though it it was bound for folk somewhere. Whether this person writing this note succeeded in his venture to have it moved to his care, obviously I couldn't say. And these um these knights of the West, they couldn't have been maybe like specifically the western part of folk. Or do you think they mean just the knights in general? I as I said, I've seen this phrase, the specific phrase somewhere before. I don't think it necessarily means the western part of folk. He's referring to the entire country as the west. Hmm. So, at the moment, I can only narrow it down to folk itself. Well, if you can... um. If maybe you can keep thinking about that and maybe give us a few things to search out once we get there back to your homeland, uh, we'll at least have a starting place. I already have some ideas. Then I will uh, gladly follow your lead. That's nice for a change. Well, uh, thank you, Valoran. Um, oh, and yes, if you could give us a, a, a short course on folk civility uh, before we get there, that way we don't embarrass you. That might be in your best interest as well as ours. Believe me, I've been considering that matter at length. But since you show an interest, I will be happy to teach you some etiquette good good um and i don't have to bathe like the prestigitation can just that's fine right as long as you are not detectably dirty Hmm. it should be fine yeah i could use a little bit of prestigitation uh yeah thank you valerie of course while I'm at it, let me also um, do a check on uh, the Black Fields. Okay. Find out what um, part of the world the Black Fields would be. 
Give me just a straight... Nah, give me history. Not, that should be fun. Um... There, there's only so much varied geography uh, in Ismilia. It's not a very large place, um, and a lot of it's kind of that similar kind of temperate forest aspect. So, black fields, as far as you can think, you know, trying to cover all the various uh, regions of Ismilia, could very easily be referring to the kind of marshy uh, swamps that Kralin's kind of built around. Um, the whole kind of section uh, where that river, river delta lets out um, is where his ledge is farmed mainly, um, and it's kind of known for it. So if you're trying to think of any sort of like black field, marshy area, that's your best bet. Derek. Yeah. While we're on the subject, you pretend to be a well-traveled man. The Black Fields. Could that be... Kralin? Maybe this note is referring to an area south of Kralin. South of the mountain range where Dragon Cliff is. You know, we have traveled a decent amount around... Um, I guess, you know, the Northern Child's Kingdom, uh, and of course in my hometown, and, you know, most of that is, you know, forest, a little bit of plains, but uh, the only, yeah, the only area I can think of that would be black um, would be from that nasty shit that they farm over, yeah, next to Kralin. Seems weird. If you know, if you're talking about physical description, yeah, that would that would make a lot of sense. Seems we're cursed to march up and down the length of Giles' kingdom. Uh, thinking back to his encounter with Dog, uh, I think Jarek would place a hand on on Valoran's shoulder and just make sure they were eye to eye and. Valoran, even if it takes us walking the entire breadth of the world, if we can prevent even a single piece of that accursed beast falling back into the hands of those who wish him to rise, I would gladly walk my entire bulk down to nothing but skin and bones. And you almost see a um, little bit of a mad fervor gripping Jarek's eyes. That is admirable, Mr. Dissel. And he removes your hand from his shoulder slowly. I agree, of course. I. It's early. It's already a bad day. But you're right. Of course. Did they start dancing again? Is that why it's so terrible? Were they, you rising? Hmm? Well, were they in earshot of us? I imagine they were moving around the camp. Valorant said he was going about his morning routine, so. No, 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 we weren't, we weren't dancing, Thor. Just, I was talking to Valorant about what we can expect coming up. What about the pieces of paper? Oh. Uh, Yes. Yeah, I have no idea what they say. There were many things regarding Toradan that didn't make much sense to me. Um, not part of my law, really, but we'll look more into it. But more concerning and pressing is this rendezvous with Porter that Duke Braun seems to have in mind for us. Where is the city? Where? North Watch. Uh, North Watch. So the Northern Empire, their capital is Central City, um, and right above that is North Watch City. It's like basically the next city up from it. Um, I'll show you on a map at some point. But it, it's very far north. Uh, it's kind of northeast. It's a little bit. It's pretty close to Graves Lake, um, up near the top of the continent. So that's roughly where you'd know that would be. All right. 
Well, so we have to meet the porter. I'm sure all of you are happy about that, I don't know. He seems like your best friend now. Right? We're all happy to see Porter. Anybody named Porter? No, okay, cool. Sure. Well, <laughs> it will be fine. Uh-oh. Uh JD, I think you're talking too much. You may need to slow down. You're starting to turn into something way too magical. Um, I'm going to... Uh, I'm ready to go. I don't have much, so... I'm excited to see our capital that I have definitely already seen at least once. Um, as you were all kind of breaking from the conversation, uh, you see Adam kind of wringing out the, the blanket that he swaddles, sparking in every night, kind of looking around and seeing that everyone's getting ready more or less and kind of follows suit. Uh, you know, getting the, the wagon all drawn up and the horses uh, reconnected and whatnot, getting everyone kind of collected and back onto the road, um, and then beginning to depart towards Freeside City. So, as you guys begin to get closer, uh, to the point where you start seeing a bit more foot traffic kind of passing you on the road, or even, you know, traveling, like, just a small distance behind you, um, is anyone nearby Adam at this point? Like, how are you guys moving down the road? Uh, Valorant has put on, notably, he has put on almost none of his insignia or colors. He's just in armor and plain traveling gear mm -hmm. and is riding uh, apart from, like, within shouting distance, but at shouting distance from the group. Okay. I believe I got shoved off my horse last time, so I'm, uh, I guess I'll just be in the cart. Okay. Well, uh, Adam would probably turn to you then, Thor. He'd be like, Master Thor, have you, have you been to Freeside City before? Oh, yes. I've been there at least four times. Um, you know, I traveled up and down this continent or wherever or whatever this thing is. I traveled all up and down here because, you know, my family, they live up in the mountains and you guys live down here. So I have to walk up and down a lot. Um, so I stopped through here once or twice. Pretty big place. Well, then you've, you've seen the, the rock god then. The what? So, uh, since you have traveled through here, Thor, go ahead and give me a, a brief history check, and I'll give you a little bit of info on Freeside City. Absolutely. There's nothing I love more than history. <laughs> nice. Um, this is probably one of the things that stands out to you the most, so it's not too difficult to recall. Um, Freeside City is governed, or policed, I guess is the better word, by a very strange group of entities um they're called rock guards and they're basically floating magically pieced together rock constructs that govern the city they enforce laws they you know function like guards more or less um and they are constantly you know going about their business you know no need to sleep all that kind of whatnot they are powered by uh three powerful wizards within the city that you've heard mention of but you don't quite remember the name of or anything about them um another notable point of free site city is all of the like the main structure the main uh center of the city has a massive anti-magic field around it which again is caused by the, the three powerful wizards in it um so a lot of the you know magical industry that you would see in a city is kind of forced out to the the edge of it due to the fact that nothing magical functions inside the city itself um so that's like briefly what you would remember about freeside city ah yes the rock guards yes i thought you said the rock god i didn't uh, i thought there was a god in there <laughs> um but yeah no the little floaty things yeah i remember those yeah, they're, they're a little scary for, for someone of my size, but they're, they're rather cool. Yeah, they are pretty cool. You know, I was thinking of adding to my collection of things. You know, I have Carl, I have Buffy. I get a rock guard, name him Rocky. I don't think they would take too kindly to you um, making one of them your pet. 
You know, there's really only one way to find out. Yes, yes, of course, you're right. Um, well, it, it shall be exciting to, to be in a new place once again. Yeah, do you know if they talk? I can't remember. Uh, yes, they, they, they have that very distinct kind of harsh voice. Oh, yeah, I remember what it sounds like yet now, yeah, yeah, yep. Well, it'll be exciting for the rest of the party to hear what they sound like. Do you think none of the uh, the others have been here before? Uh, I kind of feel like Roly would have been there. Or I imagine it, you've probably passed through there, yeah. I was yeah. there, okay. <laughs> You know, JD, I don't think he's walked this far probably in his life. You know, we were probably the first ones to get him to step out of wherever he is at, you know, whatever his hobble is. Uh, Roly, yeah, he's probably been here a time or two. Uh, and then uh, Lord Valoran, I don't think he's ever been here. I don't think he ever wants to go here again, if I had to guess. But, uh, you know, I think he'll be excited. For now. He seems a little, um, off today. Uh, yeah. I imagine he's just, you know, trying to get into his royal character. You know, establish himself so that he can assert himself into situations and be like, Hello, I'm a lord. I request attention and respect. Or maybe he just wants to be a normal person. I have no idea. I don't know what the royal people do. Well, it, it seems odd that he's not representing his house colors. That's a little bit of a step. Yes, but in which direction? Which direction? He also, you know, usually doesn't ride that far away. Hopefully um, it isn't Jarek. He does smell after last night. Yeah, I know. I, I think he tries to clean himself every morning, but I don't know that he knows what he's doing. He keeps... Flicking at his flesh and thinking that helps him not smell. I, I don't. Eh. You know his like clean cube that he does. Yeah, well, he only does it on like three spaces on his body, and he thinks that's good. It's a little like was... right, three spaces. Um... Broly, where do you keep popping out of? <laughs> I am your traveling companion, and, and why are you on my horse? What? Uh, yeah, Thor gave you his horse last session voluntarily. Voluntarily. Okay. I could <laughs> actually move the horse around. But... You know, guys, I'm literally riding right right behind y'all. Yes, if, if you want me to take a bath, you can just say so. We can hear you flabbing in the wind. Yes, we hear you. Um... <clears throat> Anyways... Anyways, yes, uh, forward uh, to Freeside City then. Indeed. So, um, as you guys continue traveling, um, it's maybe only another hour or so before you get your first glimpse of Freeside City uh, proper. It is set into like one of the big bays of Ismilia, so there's a nice long kind of stretching, you know, sea um, off to the east of it. And the actual city uh, is a lot more spread out than built up. Uh, it doesn't look like a normal city of this size, if that makes sense. Instead of it being like kind of centered around the center, it almost looks like the center has been built and then the surrounding city is kind of built up around that. Giving this almost like distinct kind of interior, interior and exterior zones, just from like visually glancing at it. In the actual center of the center of the city, there is a very tall, much more elegant, um, like palace almost, than the, the castles that you've seen, you know, much bigger than Castle Kralin or anything that you've run into in your adventures. And it is very finely decorated. The architecture is very well done and well kept. Um, it's clear that it is a lot more of a display than any sort of like strategic building. Um, you know, also with the various kind of smaller, almost like smaller castles or larger mansions kind of dotting around it very much give you that kind of regal, noble, expensive kind of vibe. Um, but it's, it's a pretty large city, probably the largest city that I'm 
picturing that you guys have interacted with, except maybe Lilianor off and Roy's Mazev. Um, but you kind of crest the hill and begin kind of descending down towards the city. Um, there is the larger part on the exterior that's not walled in. Uh, it's a lot more kind of loose and a little bit rougher. Um, for those of you who traveled here before, you would know that the, the rock guard that have been talked about is kind of like one of the more well-known gimmicks, I guess, of the city. Um, protect just the interior. So you wouldn't run into them unless you kind of go into there. But you're now kind of just strolling towards a ever-increasing... Uh, density of populace uh you know buildings are getting more frequent you know conversations picking up the sounds of the town are kind of just slowly raising in volume as you plod forward um adam just you know without any sort of direction just kind of bringing you guys into the city itself oh let me go ahead uh, and i forgot to do this there you go i think jarek would uh write up to valoran and, uh, Lord Veteran, I I've noticed that you, uh, don't seem to be your usual self. I innocently overheard Adam mentioning it. Uh, are you trying to lay low? He, uh, he just sort of, like, he sort of slumps in the saddle for a second. And without, without looking toward you, I'm being pursued. It made sense. No, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. That uh, it's a good idea. Um, do you want me to announce you whenever we, you know, give our name at the gate, or? Um, would you prefer just the typical Golden Hearts for their records? Just the Golden Hearts. Don't refer to me at all. Fantastic. And, uh, I guess Jarek would ride just slightly ahead mm -hmm. of Valoran, like half a horse ahead. Um,. But well, what is the party's so goal can... currently? Magic shop. Is that what you're heading towards? That's what I want to ask around for. Have I, I, I imagine I may have been in, in the city before, so I would have an idea yeah. somewhat. Uh, I don't think, as far as I can recall, that you really spent time here. You certainly passed through here. But if you want to go ahead and give me an investigation, just kind of asking around, I can see what I can give you. Sure, 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 sure. Is anyone else seeking out anything in particular? Um, is, is there a, uh, a city this size? Uh, would there be any like dwarven contingent that lives here, or uh, yeah? Or... So you would know this um, purely from your travels and you know, kind of the knowledge of your uh, religion. Um, this is the biggest human city near Bronchard. Um, so a lot of the major trade that's done between uh, like Giles Kingdom and Bronchard kind of ends here, or at least the dwarven part kind of ends here so there's almost like not dwarven slums but like a dwarven neighborhood um within uh free site city and so there would be like shrines to the mother and various kind of dwarven cultural buildings and events kind of there yeah i would uh i would certainly want to visit that at some point okay valor and jerick are you seeking out anything i think jerick is frozen so well, we just follow Thor for the time being. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Thor, when you begin to ask around, um, you know, various different, like, alchemist shops and things of that nature are kind of brought to your attention. Um, you're, like, specifically looking for a magical item, enchanter kind of shop, correct? Indeed, yes. Okay. So, you are eventually pointed towards Oldis's Emporium of Stuff. Uh, apparently, it is one of the most well-renowned enchanters in Free Sight City. Um, he functions very far on the western part of the city, where it's uh, a mixture of kind of urban housing and almost farmland. Apparently, he owns a very crummy apple orchard um, over there, and that's where his shop is. But that's probably your best bet. 
That is where I will go. <laughs> okay. So is the whole party going to tag along to the west? Take this. Yes. Cool. Um, okay. So you guys begin to move through the city, and, you know, it's more or less the kind of day-to-day -day, um, appearance of the city Refre yeah, reflects Kralin pretty well. You know, it's a majority populace of humans, but you do see the, the mixture of other races kind of moving about you. But, you know, day-to-day -day life seems to be pretty pleasant here. Um, the streets are probably a bit cleaner. Everything's just a bit more presentable being the capital of Giles Kingdom. Um, you see, you know, a lot more, not military presence, but just, you know, guards and soldiers and kind of um, government officials and infrastructure, that kind of thing as you're moving through. Um, but eventually you kind of just, you know, snake your way through the city off to the west, um, eventually coming to that odd mixture of kind of the rural side of town and the, the urban side. And, you know, following the directions that you were given, you eventually do find yourself heading towards this orchard. And it is a, what appears to be a small kind of twisted cobblestone cottage kind of set on top of this small hill and there's a various amounts of kind of gnarled dead looking trees kind of like in a thicket like a cluster around this building making it almost like difficult to approach besides the kind of like winding uh stone filled pathway that kind of brings you up to the front door uh there's like a thin trail of like purple smoke kind of weaving its way out of the chimney of the building um but you gotta have the wagon has to stop a fair bit off um making you approach on foot but that is what you see before you you ever been to a magic shop valorin no why mm. It was the first time for everything. I don't know, I was just curious if you, you know, you were interested in the stuff. I find it fascinating. Interested? Why not? Indeed, why not? JD, Rolly, are you coming with me? Are we near enough yeah. to hear you? Yeah, I mean, you guys are all just kind of stuck in a group. I just, so. wanted, to, I just wanted to know before I answer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Thor, uh, I'll, I'll join you. Uh, it looks too small for all of us. I'll sit out front and... <clears throat> you go ahead, there's nothing magical I need at the moment. It's true. I'm sorry about your experience with magical things. Anyways. <laughs> I will, uh... Follow the path. Okay. Um, as you meander up to the door, um, do you knock, try to open it? What, what's your approach? Hmm. What, what does the door look like? Uh, it's more or less just kind of a, you know, it's a normal-esque door, kind of like a half circle uh, top to it. Uh, it's made out of like kind of rough wooden planks. There's a like cast iron uh, like knocker in the center and then obviously some sort of like latching mechanism on the far side of it. Uh, but, you know, it's about head height with you, which is a bit bigger than you would think would fit into this structure. Um, but that is what you what you see. I guess I will take the metal knocker. I will knock. So as you go to like do the first knock, you feel the metal kind of shifting beneath your grasp, like almost like coming to life. I imagine you let go of it at that point. Sure. Okay. As you kind of like pull your hand back, you see the metal kind of like turn into an almost kind of semi-liquid material squirming into what appears to be an eye and then the iron eyelids of this eye snap open and you're being peered at by this kind of like constantly shifting eye kind of looking all over and as it like locks up into you like staring into your own you hear from this like cranky janky looking like metal horn that's like poking out from one of the branches that kind of pushes into the roof like a what what I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to poke your eye. Who are you? What do you want? Oh, I, don't, I, I, I just was- What looking, do you need? I was just looking for a magic shop and I was pointing in this direction. I didn't know they would be so aggressive. You want magic stuff? Yeah. Well, I got stuff. Uh, Come on in. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> the, the eye quickly shifts back into the, the knocker as the door kind of like opens just like an inch, just kind of showcasing that it has been opened. 
I will uh, open it, I guess. Okay. So as you like push the door open as it swings inwards, it is revealed that the, the space of the shop is deceptive. The interior is maybe four or five times larger than the exterior would show. Um, and it's just like giant, it's like a pawn shop on steroids. You slowly push the door open and there's like a lit, no, not litany, a strange collection of mismatched shelves of varying height and material covered in almost an unexplainable amount of knickknacks and items and weird creatures and plants and everything that you would assume is in a, a magical emporium is just lining every inch of this building and as you like push the door all the way open you see this figure floating towards you it's this kind of small you know frail looking elderly man a very long white beard that hangs down low he's sat cross-legged on what appears to be an old like cooking pan that is floating magically through the air and as it like drifts towards you he's using it as like a seat almost like a hovering platform um so he hovers over all of this stuff kind of showcasing that it isn't really even designed for you to move around in the space unless you're floating there's no real place to step or walk there's you know n not like a viewing area for any of these items as he like floats his little white beard kind of like trailing behind him as he gets closer and he like comes up to maybe like a few feet away from you, you recognize the the eye that was on the doors the eyes that fell this man he like peers you he's like what magical stuff do you want, huh? I was just looking for, you know, stuff that maybe could, like, protect me a little bit. Not like armor, you know? I like to show my chest and stuff, but, you know, like... Protect you anything. from poison? Protect you from blast? Protect you from crushing? Protect you from falling? Uh... Protect you from heartbreak? From what? Heartbreak? Heartbreak? Oh, no. no I'm good. I've had... I'm pretty tough. Um, a hunk like you? Yeah, I know. I'm usually the heartbreaker. <laughs> um, anyways. Uh, no, not falling. I'm okay with that. Uh, just, you know, make myself a little harder to hit, you know? Like, if you try to hit me right now. Oh, you want to shrink? Smaller. Smaller magical stuff. I mean, I, I, I don't want to shrink necessarily. Just like, you know, a shield. Uh, okay. Uh, I think Jarek would kind of smack Thor on the ass and be like, a stone wall is a great defense and give him some bardic inspiration. I don't need a wall. Okay. Oh, God. Okay. No, like, you know, a shield makes it harder to hit this part of my body. I just need like a shield, but not like a shield. You know what I'm saying? Because I have to carry this thing. No. <laughs> whip out my giant sword as you pull out the sword you see his eyes kind of going wide he goes and like looks it up and down he's like shard's edge why did you find this how much do you want what no i'm not selling it what hey. three thousand gold no hey whoa hey whoa five thousand <laughs> gold uh valoran how much in death are you nope okay uh <laughs> No, no, I'm not trying to sell it. I'm trying to use it. For the I can use it better than you. Uh, can you? You like see him like cr like bring one of his arms up, and you see the smallest like pea-sized bicep kind of poking out of his flesh. He goes, "Yes, five thousand gold. I want your stuff." <laughs> uh, um, s sir, sir, uh, I think what my friend is looking for is more akin to this. And Jericho will pull out the pendant. Um, yeah, do you ha do you have anything that maybe could do something similar to this? You see him float closer, and kind of almost past Thor to Jarek, and he leans in enough to kind of cup the pendant in his hand, which makes him like uncomfortably close to your face, Jarek. And he's kind of like looking over at it, and then you see coming out of his flesh, like physically growing out of his flesh is this like almost kind of jeweler's lens as it like flips over his eye as he looks down at the aim and he goes oh oh you want a shield amulet are you selling this one 
Yeah, no, no, definitely not. Why are you here? I told you, I'm here what to buy not? things. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I, I'll go see if I have your stuff. No, but I don't, okay. What do you want? I don't need an amulet like that, I just want something that's... Because his is like, you know, it makes it a little hard to hit them for like a short time. I just want it to be all the time. Is that so hard? That's, yes, that's hard. What? <laughs> you think everyone walks around just invulnerable, just like a little tiny necklace hanging off? They're just like, oh, you can't hit me. That's not what I'm saying. I just want to be a little hard. Not invulnerable. That's what that does. What What? what does? It's pendant. Yeah, but it's, it's a brief amount of time. Kind of like narrows his eyes at you. Looks over at Jarek, looks over at you. <sighs> I'll see what I have. And he kind of like whips around his little hovering cooking pot and then almost like zips across the shop into like a deeper part of it. Uh, as he goes away, I'd yell out. Um, oh, and if you have like a, I don't know, wand of fireball or something, that would be okay too. JD, I don't know that we can afford that. Well, if we can, then that's going to be very useful. It's true. But the push comes to shove, we're definitely selling the rapier. The, the one you gave me? Yup. <laughs> but Thor, I could, I could put it to so much use. Aha. Uh -huh. Also, doesn't the sword kind of go against, like, I don't know, whatever your dog is for? Well, I mean, when someone dies, I don't think you can make immortal choices to their body. That's not true. <laughs> what? So, That's as you valid. hear... <laughs> what, a lot of... You <laughs> As you hear a lot of clattering from the other side of the shop, um, eventually you see the kind of hovering older gentleman kind of rising up from this pile, and he has a bunch of stuff kind of collected in his arms, and he, like, swings back over to you. As he does, Thor, you feel a kind of, like, odd touch on your shoulder, which you were kind of thinking was Carl, and so you realize that Carl's not there. And if you, like, glance over to your right, you see this, like, purple tendril has come off of this like kind of massive flower besides your face and carl is kind of just like chilling in one of the like vines more or less it's like kind of hung in a u shape and he's like sitting in it almost like a swing oh what are you doing i didn't tell you to do that it's, it was a swing okay 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 this place is getting crazy you just hear like a <laughs> you like kind of constantly from behind you. Um, are are you saying that Carl is talking right now? Uh, Carl can uh, telepathically communicate with Thor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I was about to freak out. <laughs> so as this hovering man comes back, you see a small collection in his arm. You see a bunch of various kind of necklaces and a few rings. And then you see like a, a long kind of gnarly looking wand. And he picks that up and he goes, Wanda Fireballs, yes. Um, how many uses does it have? How much money do you have? What do you No, it... Are you are you telling me that you charge it and then give it to me after I pay you, or does it have a set amount? I just want to know if you can buy it. Well, I could, I could be happy to offer. Uh, no, what, what, what? How much does it cost? Pieces for it. How much does it cost, though? How much do you have? He said a hundred silver. Did you say a hundred silver plate pieces? Is that what you just said? I, uh, yeah, I can, I can give you a hundred silver pieces for it. He's like drops the pile of magical items off the like kind of floating saucer that he has. Like, you could have to afford my stuff. Fine, two hundred silver pieces. Get out of my shop. Oh, 
JD. Oh, jeez. Hey, I didn't even get to see the thing that I want to see. Wait, second question. First question, actually. What is your name? Who are you? I am Aldis. Of all this Emporium of stuff. Oh, that's your name. Okay, I figured it out now. No, I just put it on the building. Huh. That makes sense, too. Anyways. How much do you have? Uh, on me? Currently, I have... Uh, and I'll just... Uh, kind of like it's like 100 and something gold yeah 111 he looks in the bag he's like get out of my shop what but you can't even tell me how much it costs so how can you be like get out of my shop this is just what I have on me doesn't mean my toenail like is more expensive than you have I you and he lifts up his foot and it's just like wrinkly old like never used foot because he seems to float everywhere so it's almost like Smooth, like a wrinkly, saggy smoothness that's very odd looking, very tender looking. And you see his big toenail is pure platinum, and he kind of like wiggles it in front of you. What? Why do you have a plat? Why do you have a toe made of. Okay. But can't you at least tell me how much it costs? He like looks at the discarded wand that fell to the floor. He's like, the wind of fireballs. I mean, that's what he wants to know. I don't really care about that. So you can tell me how much it costs, but I, I just, I want to know about my thing. But you that can tell. fifteen hundred gold pieces. There, there you go, JT. <laughs> what? Can you stop vomiting all over the place? I mean, magic stuff is expensive. Okay. What about my thing? Your, I don't want to get hit stuff. I mean, do you like getting hit? Is that what this is all about? I don't leave my house. Who is gonna hit me? What if one of your customers hit you? Do you want to try? No. Do you want me to try? Is this like somewhere that I don't, I don't want to do this? If, wait, wait, wait. If he succeeds, will you drop your price? Ellen backs away. <laughs> you see his lips like curl into a smirk. He goes, Sure. No, I don't. I don't believe that he's. I don't. I don't think he's hittable, JD. I'm just, you know, if that's an option, I was saying that might not be a bad idea. Oh boy! Are you leaving? I'm asking you a question of how much it costs. You haven't even shown me what I want. He like looks at all the various rings and pendants and whatnot, kind of like scanning them over, and then like the little monocle thing kind of clips down over his eye again. He kind of like digs through him, picks up a ring. He goes, "This makes you look fuzzy for seconds. You want to know how much this is worth?" Sure, why not? Three hundred gold pieces. Okay. I, so. This is the cheapest thing I have. Okay. Carry on. Get out of my shop! I th th but that's all I have on me. He has more. And I'll point back to JD. Also, I have magical things I could sell. Like your not sword? No, not like my sword. You want me to hit you with my sword? You can try. I don't want to try. Why can't we just be friends? Why do we have to try to hit each other? Can you hit me? I have a business to run. I'm very busy. Can you even hit? Like, are you? You seem to be telling everybody to get out of your shop. Who is apparently? I tell poor people to get out of my shop. I think you're just making judgments based on what I showed you. Yes. Yeah, but that's all I have. I don't carry a lot on me. As you can well, see. Then why did you come shopping with no money? Because I have that guy. Look how big he is. He has, like, he's stuffed full of money. He's like a piggy bank. You just poke him and things come out. No, don't poke me. <coughs> yeah, don't are you me. buying something or are you leaving? Are you showing me something that I want or are you not? This is the cheapest thing that you could possibly even want. But I didn't say I wanted the cheapest thing, did I? How much money do you have? JD, how much money do we have? Um, you know, uh, honestly, Thor, if you if you take into account of our recent expenditures and 
you know, various gambling debts, um, they could come out to somewhere around maybe two two hundred gold what? to add what you will have. What? What? The, where did all my money go? What has happened? Jarek's can freeze. Oh, he's back. Didn't we have a lot uh, of no, money? No, I. Just, well, I mean, yes, but uh, I figured we might want to, you know, uh, distribute that appropriately. To what? When are we going to pay off the, the, the debts? No? What debts? What do we owe? <laughs> it's oh, uh, time to leave! And then the floor beneath you, like, shifts, like, almost pulling you out of the doorway that you were standing in, and the door just swings closed in your face. And then a few seconds later, door opens, Carl comes flying out, door closes again. I can't, like, try to stay? If you're just sitting there not buying anything. Well, I was trying to buy something. <laughs> Thor, Thor I, I think we can find someone more agreeable. To maybe just enchant something of yours rather than try to purchase. But they're telling me we only have 200 gold. Well, no, we have more than that. But when a merchant starts the conversation with how much do you have, chances are you're going to get piss poor products for a very expensive price. I mean, he said the wand of fireball things was a 1500 gold. Yeah, well, that's just ridiculous. I don't think that's that ridiculous. Uh, Jericho will double check his <laughs> uh, uh, note. Um, trying to remember how much there is. Uh, yeah, okay, Thor, we have like about 1,700 golds in the, in the party account. So why did you just tell me 200 and get me kicked out of the shop? Okay, that's called haggling, Thor. You start small, and you try and keep it small, and the merchant eventually gives it to you for a reasonable price. JD, you're starting to sound like the rock guard. <laughs> Jerk is having a mild stroke, that is okay. No, see, JD, what you did is you started low and you got us kicked out. That's what you that's what you got us. Uh, how about this? Um the next shop we go into Let's let's let Valorant do the negotiating. He seems to be uh better spoken than any of the rest of us. And maybe he can get a better answer than we can are you guys back outside at this point yeah they're outside at this point yes that's right leave it to the young nobleman who's had many many years of negotiating with merchants <laughs> well, Broly, have you? oh no quite had quite right J.D. Rowley seems angry. Well, no, no, Rowley, have, are you, did you buy and trade things? I'm a dwarf. Besides eating, drinking, shitting, and making other dwarves, we buy and sell things. It's what we do. I think that's what most people oh. I'm hey, sorry, Rolly. I thought you just uh, prayed a bunch. <laughs> Can I try knocking on the door? Sure. Okay. Are you using the knocker? Yup. And then I, I will have my boots of the Winterlands, because nobody took them from me, in my hands. Okay. So you hit the knocker, the eyeball comes out, you see it like scanning. You see it pause for a moment on the boots and then lock back up to you. What? Yeah, how much for these? What are they? What do you mean, what are they? You know what they are. I can't see through the door. Who do you think I am? Well, why did you kick me out? You weren't buying anything. Okay. I was you see the door, like the, the eyeball come back and or go away, and then the door opens slightly. 
All right, I will open it and I will close it. And I will be the only one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you step inside and you see him floating back towards you. Okay. So I have these. Yes. Kind of looks at him. Monocle comes out. He appears over them. Okay. Okay. How much? I don't really need boots, but they are stuff. Yeah, but don't you sell them to other people who walk? I don't sell a lot. Uh, so then why do you walk? 300 gold. 300 gold? You would give me 300 gold for these? Do you know how much yes. these are worth? 300 gold. No, they're not worth 300 gold. I had a guy down the street tell me they were worth like 1500 gold. Who? Who down the street? I don't know, I didn't ask his name, it wasn't painted on the door. I don't believe you. That's unfortunate for you. Do you want to do a persuasion check to barter with him? Yes. Um, Slash deception, however you want to go about that. Hold on, let me check. You do have uh, bardic inspiration. I would definitely like to persuade. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Let's see what we got. What is... What is... Uh, What's the Bardic Inspiration? Is that a D6? Uh, yes. <laughs> it's a 22? Yep. Okay. You kind of like hold the boots and you see him and you see a small bit of like saliva kind of coming out of his mouth as he begins like salivating at the idea of like getting the boots. It's like... <sighs> 350. I just told you they were worth fifteen hundred, and you're going three fifty. It seems like you don't want them as much. I want them about three hundred fifty dollars gold worth. <laughs> All right. Um. Hold on. Pause. Pause that. Out of character. Did anybody actually want these boots? I never heard of anybody say they actually wanted them. Uh, what did they do? Uh, they make- They allow you to move through, yeah, like, rough mountainous terrain without disadvantage or, uh, like, speed, uh, impediment, yeah. and also they keep you warm constantly. Uh, that's what they are. If we put him on Sparky, would he sweat more? No, probably not. <laughs> Well, okay. Okay, so I'm, nobody wants these. <laughs> All right, back into it. I want three seventy-five. Persuasion check. Damn. <laughs> oh shit! Balls don't throw off the table. Ah shit. <laughs> He like looks at the boots and then looks at you and you see his hands like fidgeting like his, his fingers like can't stop moving. He's like 375. Don't people like shake, you know? <sighs> he like reaches out his hand like daintily kind of puts it in yours. How big is it? Am I? <laughs> it's like the size of your palm is like the size of his hand. Okay. I'll just... And then I will give him the boots. As you like go to like hand it to him, one of those tendrils that was kind of like moving around nearby kind of like comes down and like loops around the boot and then pulls it from your grasp. Oh, okay, order that. Yup. Yup. And then he kind of like looks around and he goes, Why did I... And then you see, like, a giant, heavy leather pouch that's been, like, stitched and repaired with, like, big patches all around it lift from the floor. And it is probably the size of Jarek. Like, it is a large, large sack. And you just hear, ching, 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 as it's, like, kind of floating, almost like it's being, like, moved on, like, a really janky conveyor belt and, like, shaking up and down. Um, and as it gets uh, close to you, he kind of like lifts the drawstring open and you see it's just full of like gold and platinum pieces and it just starts like quickly 
pulling gold from it to start counting out 375. Um, while he's counting, because this man is all about doing things fast, fast, fast. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, do you have like, uh, is there a thing that can hold a lot of things in a small thing? Yes. How much does one of those cost? How big does it need to be? Uh, I, I honestly don't know, like, what... Yeah, I know, you're, you're asking about the, the, is it the haversack, is what it's called? Uh, no. Haversack, bag of holding. Yeah, bag of holding is a good word. Um, <laughs> hmm. Kind of, like, looks around, he's like, I think I have two of them? Kind of, like, pauses for a moment, like, thinks. Seven thousand. For both of them, or for one of them? For one of them. I feel like that's extremely high. Uh, he eventually kind of like slides the 375 into your hand. I'll take the 375. Okay. Um. Okay, so I won't take that, but... I have a question big man, for you. Big man, I'll make you a deal. Oh, okay. I will trade you a bag of holding for your sword. Okay, now let's let's just be serious here. What am I going to hit people with if I don't have this giant freaking sword? The bag of holding! You want me to just say this was worth 7,000 gold and then hit them? <laughs> <laughs> just offering? No, 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 okay. I have a question for you, though. Is there a magical item you are looking for? Stuff. All the stuff. I love all magic. Okay, just anything in general? Anything. Okay. Well, I didn't know if there was like a specific thing you were looking for that somebody or something has that you wanted. Because like this thing, (laughs) I wanted specifically, so I went and got it. Anything that is unique, only one of. I'll pay top dollar for. Mm. But technically isn't a, a whatever bag. You had two of them, so isn't it not one of a kind which makes it less valuable? That That is a good price. I don't think so. I don't think Carl thinks so either. Carl <laughs> just shake his head. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, well, at least I could sell those. Uh, but you never showed me, like, the ring that I actually wanted, so I don't know how much it costs. So I don't know how much to come back with. If you don't think you have enough, don't come back. I don't know that that's how that works. Why can't you just... You told me the price of the little sack thing. You told me how much you'll pay for my sword. You tell me how much you'll pay for this, but you won't tell me... The, you tell him the price of the fireball one that he can't even afford. You want an item that makes it harder to hit you. I showed you the fuzzy ring. Yeah. That would make it harder to hit you. No, but that... But see, you took took the thing I said and you took a piece of it. And then you just took that all the way to the back. That is the cheapest thing that would feasibly relate to what you asked. Okay, but what's the not cheapest thing? If I tell you, will you leave? Yeah, that was my whole point, is I want to know and then I'll go. He uh, looks um, off behind him, and you see kind of lining the walls is more of the kind of like larger garments, like cloaks and armor, uh, you know, clothing, masks, you know, the bigger items. And they're kind of like set up on like mannequins and whatnot. And he kind of like cranes a little small figure back towards this kind of elegant suit of armor way back in the corner. And it looks like it is designed out of um, kind of like really thin elegantly carved metal leaves like the entire suit of armor is kind of crafted by various species of metal leaves and he points to that he goes that is the armor of the fall knight it allows you to vanish into thin air for an entire day a whole freaking day a whole day dude that's so cool it's pretty cool 
you want me to guess how much it's worth? Sure. Like 15,000 gold. It's 10,000, but pretty close. Hey, you know, I was, I was almost on the money. I just figured, you know, little wand destroys things, 1,500, and then invisible for a day times 10 or 20. I don't know how math works. Anyways. See, but I was looking for not armor. But oh well, that's just good information. I aim to please. Now get out. Hey, it's nice doing business with you. Bring me more stuff, and sell me that sword. I'll do one of those two things when I come back. Oh, my name's Thor, is... by the way. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, was anyone doing anything else during this time? <clears throat> you are uh, frozen again, sir. Fucking A. <laughs> I think it's because you're out on your uh, like patio or deck or well, whatever. Normally I don't have this problem, but y'all yeah, move inside. Okay. So, Rolly, did you still want to uh, visit the, the dwarven side of town? Yo, yeah. <laughs> Yo, awake there? Yeah, I thought you said Thor. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, is there anything else you want to do here while you're at the shop, Thor? Um, no, because, I mean, I can't really do anything else that I know of. Okay. Um, are you guys uh, planning on, like, spending the night here, passing through town? What What's the goal for Free Sight City? I was just thinking about passing through. Okay. Is this, um... Can I ask around to see if this is the only magic shop in town? Um, when you initially asked, um... You were kind of given less enchanters and more kind of like you can find like magic shops that are more like healing shops that like specialize in potions and ointments and antidotes. There's mm -hmm. like herbalist shops and that kind of thing, which still technically fall in the range of magical. Yeah. Um, but this was like the it's almost like the um, not the Walmart because it's not like franchise, but like <laughs> the shop that's pointed towards for like this is the one that like lords, ladies, kings would like travel to go to. Um, so yeah. it's much like the most prominent one. And then is there like a, uh, I guess a potion shop? That... Yeah, th I mean, those are pretty commonplace throughout the world in general. Like healing, not stations, but like, you know, almost like a, a doctor's office you would find almost in every town. There are like potion sellers okay. pretty much everywhere. Gotcha. Okay, cool. cool. So, um, Rolly, is it uh, safe to say that you would just like seek out the, the dwarven part and head that way and everyone's kind of milling with him um well that's up to them i you mm -hmm. know I, i'm starting to be um a little more um i mean you can probably tell Rolly's just starting to get a little more uh apprehensive uh been gone from broadshard a while and return is just uh, starting to be a little concerning to him is all okay um, but yeah, so still, you know, moving with like the whole wagon and, you know, Adam and everyone in tow, just kind of moving, kind of ping pong throughout the city. Um, Rolly, from having visited here before, you know that the kind of like Dwarven district is the, the port kind of set up to the east. It's not the entire port, but a good chunk of it is referred, referred, referred to as Forge Port District. Um, it basically is like the last bastion of Dwarven trade before it kind of gets like put on ships and sent all over the world. Um, so they kind of all collect there, and that's like the end point for a lot of the merchants that uh, come from Bronchard. So you guys kind of move down that direction, and it is very clear when you kind of step over the line from the kind of human part of the settlement to the dwarven part of the settlement. There is quickly a much more kind of mechanical, almost industrial feel to a lot of the architecture and tools and equipment that you see kind of around. Um, a lot of the carts almost seem to have like mechanical aspects built into it um not to the point where they're like powered by some sort of machinery but they have like cranes and uh like lift gates and stuff built into them it's just a much more industrious area um and also the population population quickly reflects uh the same thing uh 
like 80% dwarves at this point, um, all walks of life, a lot of them appearing to be merchants, some of them kind of settling here as their main home, so they're doing kind of more general townspeople tasks, like, you know, cleaning out their rugs or whatever, you know, emptying out their chamber pots, um, but it is an odd feeling for the, the not vertically challenged of you. Uh, ma mainly Thor and Valoran, as you walk into a populace that is basically about, you know, I don't know, hip height to you, it feels like you're almost like walking in like a, a mini world. A lot of the buildings are a lot shorter uh, and less accommodating to the, the tall folk, so that's also another thing that kind of like shifts your perspective a little bit. Um, but you're kind of left with this like general rougher chatter, you know, the dwarven dialect and also the dwarven vocal cords are usually a bit more rough than the other uh, species that you deal with. So it's kind of this like deeper chatter that you're not quite used to, but Rolly, it very quickly makes you feel at home. I mean, obviously there's some things missing, but just the feel of being surrounded by dwarves is kind of like a, a calming feeling, or maybe not, depending on how Rolly is handling it, but it's very much something that you would notice. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, the first thing uh, I I'd like to obviously get a little lubed up here, so I need to find mm. a. I I I would like to find uh, somewhere that would serve spiral down. Okay, um, as you're coming in, oh excuse me, um, Adam seems to be like oh gassy. Oh, Adam seems to be kind of excited because. Uh, as far as you can tell, he hasn't been to this part of the city before. So he's kind of like taking in all the sights or whatever and kind of like waving at the various dwarves. It's almost like a like a Disney princess scene where he's like, oh, yes, hello. Oh, hello. Like, oh, this, this is fantastic. He's just like taking it all in. Um, as you get to like kind of the port open area, the kind of like a work yard for the port itself, um, you see, you know, a, a tremendous amount of like... Uh, Hustle and bustle? Yeah, that's the right term. Uh, kind of going on around you. Uh, lining the edge of the workyard are various different, what you would assume to be like workhouses or barracks. But there is one building that is designed to look like a giant tankard of ale. It's metal, cylindrical, tall. It has like fake foam kind of dripping over the edge of it with this long handle that acts like a chimney. A little bit of like smoke kind of coming out the side of it. Uh, there's a small hanging wooden sign that like kind of pokes out the front. And it's the Dark Crawler's Tavern and Inn. Um, and that would be kind of the first drinking establishment that you would spot. Ah, uh, yes, I remember. Hard to forget this place. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Adam. Jarek, you'll be drinking, won't you? Uh, yes, I um, might have some business as well. Well, that's mysterious. But in we go. So, uh, Thor and Valoran, are you entering or are you staying out? Come in for the time being. What was the okay. name of the tavern again? Uh, the Dark Crawler's Tavern and Inn. Got it. Uh, I will go in. Okay. Uh, the door is about five feet tall, so you gotta really, like, crane, duck your head, and almost kind of, like, crouch into the door frame itself. Once you're in, the roof is about, I mean, like, an inch or two above your head, Thor. So, like, it's not making you, like, crouch, but it's, like, right there. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, as you all go in, you see it's a giant cylindrical building, uh, and there is a bar kind of built in the center of it. This long, very well-oiled and, um, stained, like, wooden circular bar that kind of stretches around the, the center of it. Um, there are three or four rather, not provocatively dressed, uh, dwarven women, but, like, tavern wench, I don't know if that's a derogatory term at this point, um feeling in their their appearance uh they are very much like you know talking up the the local sailors and traders and you know slinging drinks here and there you know going about the all the different you know kegs and casks and whatnot behind the bar um and there's a kind of lively environment to the whole uh building and 
as far as you can tell, it is purely full of the, the, the dwarven, the, the, the dwarven, the dwarven race. Um, so you kind of stand out like a sore thumb. You maybe get like a quarter of the the patrons in there, kind of like look over at you, just kind of like giving you a quick look, because like apparently it's not a very common occurrence for the the tall folk to come into this establishment. But that is the the tavern that you find yourself in. <clears throat> so uh, I guess there's room for us to all just sit down at the bar. Yeah, you could certainly find a seat at the bar. There's probably also a few empty tables kind of kicking around if you wanted to do that as well. Up to you guys. Uh, is it okay for, you know, me and uh, Valorant to be in here? Yes, why wouldn't it be? I don't know, everybody's just looking at us. Because you're taller than they are. That is... Through. Uh, at Roly, if we could uh, take a, a, a table somewhere by the wall, um, there is one thing I've been neglecting to talk to you guys about. Um, I'm assuming there's a table by a wall. Yeah, you, you can find a kind of more secluded table. All right. So you start making your way that way. Yeah. So as you guys begin to start shifting towards the, the direction, uh, the table in your line of sight, Thor, you feel a hand kind of press on your thigh as like a, a stout, you know, big, burly, uh, physically labored dwarf kind of like steps in front of you a little bit. And he's holding two tankards in his right hand. He like looks up at you. He's like, look at you, you big brute. God damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm very big, very tall. You know, that's just how how life is what what's up it's just mighty impressive well, i mean you're like you're kind of you know you're a little less tall but you're still like basically me ah, i'm nice and thick yeah exactly like the you're ladies like, like it okay yep you're uh you're like compressed me i like it here hey you big brute and he hands one of the, the tankards up to you oh thank you sir i appreciate it what is your name Oh, I'm Gadgar. Gadgar. Got it. I'm Thor. What is your name? Thor! Thor! Today you are an honorary dwarf. Well, I appreciate that. Today you are an honorary friend of mine. He kind of like hops a little bit to kind of like clank the tankard with you. And he like slaps you on the ass and he goes, To Thor! And everyone around the table or the, the tavern's like, To Thor! And then everyone <laughs> like quickly guns a little bit of their drink. Oh no. And I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> what was his name? Gaga. Gaga? Like Lady Gaga? G H A D G H A. Gaga. Sure. <laughs> but besides that small interruption, you are able to move uh, to that table you were heading towards. Oh, I wouldn't take you anywhere you weren't welcome. Well, I was just making sure that, you know, nobody was like, ew, tall people, you know? Cause... No, no, most of those sort tend to stay in the purely dwarven cities, the Ones that would live here, they're much more open-minded. Gotcha, because I mean, if I didn't know JD, I probably would be like, ew, big person, you know, so. That's uh, the door. Mostly Thor because big... of the smells. Not yeah, so that too. Either. Big smelly person? It's even worse. So, as you all collect at the table, um, one of the tavern waiters we'll call her just in case um kind of shifts her way through the crowd over to you um as you all are like sat she kind of like looks you all over and she kind of stops her early she goes i'm man of the mother technically we're all men of some mother but yes i know what you mean yes it's quite refreshing to be among my own kind it's been quite a while well, I know you you travel all over it must be fascinating but I, I must I appreciate and thank you for your service uh what, what, what is your name Roly Halfbeard at your service 
And you are. She like pauses for a moment. She's like, half bid, half bid. The half bids. Yes, the half bids. Oh, 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 lad. Oh. I, I had some time to get on with it, but. I, um... Well, uh, everything on the house, Rolly half bid. I and and a man of the the mother. Oh, I. Oh. We won't trouble you for much, but um, a spiral down ale for me, and um, not sure it sits well with the other folk here. So, whatever they would like, I do appreciate the offer, but one round is simply enough. She kind of like looks around at the other patrons, or you, I guess, the, the party, kind of like leans over to Rolly, like, ah, they don't have the dwarven constitution. No, no, and um, constitution or palate, uh, take your pick. The Thor could probably drink it all day, but uh, certainly doesn't enjoy it, I don't think. Drinking it right now! I don't know if I actually am. Uh, it was not Sparrow Daniel, but... Doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Um, then she like looks around, she's like, okay, well, well, one cask of Spiral Down Ale uh, for the rolly half-beard of the mother. Uh, what else will you gents be drinking? Um, wh whiskey, if you have it. Certainly. I will, uh, I'll take another of not this, but whatever he's having. I'll point to Rolly. Certainly. And it points over to Valor and he's like, and you? Whatever you usually end up serving to tall folk when they come in here. Ah, yes. The watered down shit. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and are you the owner? No. Oh, who's the owner? That's Kmore. Kmore. And what was your name again? Oh, I'm Rakte. It's more exotic, that's not my actual name, but the, the boys like calling me that. Well, yes, uh, stage names that now yes. appearing. Uh, Rakte. <laughs> Give it up. There's like a little, like, flourish. <laughs> I'll get your drinks for you, gents. And then she saunters off. But leaving you by yourselves for the, the meantime. All right, so JD, are you here to tell us now that you have gotten off of your dieting and exercise and you're not losing weight? Because I don't really think it's a secret. We're all here for you still. Okay, Thor, we all have lapses in our routine. Um, you know, just because mine has extended like a week or three, that, that's not the point. I think it's been like a month. I've... Anyways. <sighs> I didn't think you noticed that. <clears throat> um, no, 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 no. Um, so as y'all uh, y'all might recall, y'all went to go talk to the Duke. Um, and I took some time for some reflection and contemplation afterwards. And I sought some advice from my friend. And I found out a few things that were more than a little concerning. Um, you know, I really, I, I gave it to him and, and I held my own ground and he definitely did not bully me around at all. Uh, but the main things that I learned that would be important to y'all is... Novin is alive. Um, okay, well, I'm not bullied. Um, alive, I mean, in what form? Uh, he certainly seemed dead the last time we saw him. I think he. Uh, oh, no, if you want to answer that, go ahead. Um, give me a deception check, Jarek. 
Um, while you were going about this, uh, Rakte returns with Spiral Down Ale for, for Roly and uh, Thor, and then, no, yes, yes for Thor. Uh, and then a small shot glass of whiskey for Jarek, and then a, a tankard of basically just regular ale for Valorant. Uh, the one thing you guys notice when being served your drinks is like everything in this establishment seems kind of smaller to you due to the fact, you know, built for smaller people. But distinctly, the tankers and the drinking glasses seem familiar for your hands, like the regular size that you would expect. Um, <laughs> Thor, you can easily tell that Jarek's embellishment was uh, just that, an embellishment. As expected. Yes, carry on. Uh, well, as it was explained to me, Novin survived, uh, as there are a number of ways to survive death. Um, you know, yeah, I didn't get the exact details, but whatever happened, whenever Valoran ran him through it was not the end of him he perseveres and the oddest thing was from the visions I was granted we appeared to be on the same side quite interesting he uh like, what do you mean on the same... As in, we're trying to stop the same thing? Uh, as far as I could tell, yes. We had all been gathered with a a great army within a camp uh, filled with... You're cutting it out again, Jarek. <laughs> him. Him. <laughs> Let me let me know whenever I'm back on track. Yeah, I think you're good, yeah. Okay. Um we were we were in a military encampment full of people, different banners from Giles, different uh regiments from folk, even dwarven units were, were with us. Um and you know Novin was there with us, old, wrinkled, but very much alive. He was there sitting around on the campfire with us. Uh, you know, I looked resplendent, very well mannered. Uh, you know, I, I had lost a lot of weight. Um, Thor, you look like you had actually gained some weight and gotten fatter. So, you know, mm -hmm. just watch out on that one yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Thor happens to all of us. Yeah, so the, so this is probably like what twenty years into the future, right? Because, I mean, you slumming down seemed like a. Well, Thor, I I'm getting on in years. I will probably be dead in twenty years. Um, so I would guess this may have been within the next five to ten. Oh. Um, well. It always was a possibility that he was seeking the... It was the... dismembered parts of Tordan, is that correct? Yeah. As far as I recall, yes. But that it, was... It could always be possible that his intention was to make it so that Tordan was not summoned. But why... Why is he all Ben? And not old now, or I guess when we fought him earlier. Is... Well, coming back from the dead might aid you. Does it? Oh. I don't know. I don't know that we actually killed Novin. Coming back I from don't the dead have... in the stomach might aid you. What did you say, Valoran? Something that took his form? I mean, I have no evidence of this, but based on the fact that I saw him as an elderly man, I wonder if possibly his his soul or his essence was corrupted by Toradin to become a pawn in perhaps his actual 
physical body is maybe withheld captive somewhere, still aging, still moving forward through the flow of time, but perhaps, you know, used as some kind of catalyst or fodder for creating minions. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. So there could be multiple of young him out there. I, I certainly hope not. Uh, this is, seems very crazy. It hurts my brain. And I'm less certain of this, but there may be a piece of Toradan back in Thrice Tower, or possibly even a key to something. But I may have been reading too much into that. Why didn't you tell us that when we were like, you know, not halfway through the country? Well, Thor, because I don't like to talk to him very often, so I try not to. But didn't you say you were, you know, asserting yourself to Dog and you guys were on good terms? Uh, this is a very conflicting story now. Oh, Thor, I don't we talk about, okay? No. I'm cutting like, out like against the her. Dude. Oh, you're good. Oh. No, am I back? Okay. Yeah, you're good. Um, uh, uh, well, Thor, it's like the Duke. You know, we didn't really try to have tea parties with him, but he, when he was near us, you know, we were cordial. I would want to have a tea party with him, but he uh, he doesn't seem like the person that would have a tea party. Well, well Thor, how about this? Um, the next time that I am ripped into an alternate reality with Dog, I will ask him if he would like to possess you. And then you can have tea parties with him all you want. Did you just threaten to possess me with somebody else? I mean... Yes. Yes, I did. And uh, I think Jarek will attempt to square up. Oh, Jesus. Are you going to try and intimidate Thor? <laughs> yes. Go for it. You want to give me a... Charisma saving throw? Is that a thing? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Jarek seems um larger than life. Okay, damn, JD, calm down. Look, I, I, I'm sorry, Thor. I just I'm not a fan of being beholden to someone else, especially. One as fast. Oh, you're cutting yeah. out. So, anyways, that was what I had to tell you guys. Um, <clears throat> Man, the city is really taking a toll on you. You're starting to sound like the rock guys. Am I not? No, you're good. You're good. Right now. Okay. I, I just thought you should know that. And. I hope that y'all will use that knowledge appropriately. Did you want um, assistance remembering certain things, Jarek, or is that... I would love to, because uh, I uh, I know that I end up in a dungeon, but I'm pretty sure that's just bad choices. Mm -hmm. and... That was one thing. As far as the what you're trying to get across uh, this time... Uh, Things of interest, because uh, you describe both you and Thor in the future, but you do not describe Roly and Valoran. Um, oh. So there's... So there's that. Yeah. And also, when describing Novin, he was distinctly missing a particular feature that he's he usually has. Or at least that you saw him have last. That's right. Um, 
it was his regular eye or socket? Regular eye. Okay. Oh, yeah, yes. Um, and, by the way, Lord Valoran, you, um, I'm not really sure what happens, but your eye was glowing, or maybe it was your side of the entire half of your face, but I think it was your eye was very bright, full of holy power. Uh, Roly, we were able to complete your family's armor. And Thor, as I said, you got fat and lazy. So, um, Chitty, I know you know, you're Novin, about that. It, anyways, Novin was a, a regular man, as I said, old, but he didn't have the whole business on his face. It was regular, normal. <laughs> but I thought you should know. So, wait, did he have, but did he have like both eyes, not the one glowing? Yes. Uh, Novin? <laughs> yeah, no, Novin. Yeah, no, he was like a regular dude. No big ass eye, no empty socket, just regular eyes. But now Valoran has a yellow eye. No, he had a glowing eye full of divine power. You know, Valoran, if we do come across any type of magical gemstones from the gods, you might consider replacing your, your left eye with it. I'm not going to shove rocks in my eye socket, Jarek. <laughs> well, not with the eye still in it. You'd probably have to gouge it out first, but just a thought. I, this is this is a vision. Are, are you are you prepared to consider that some of this is allegory? It's a metaphor. You're a bard. You understand metaphors. He's more of the rhyming type of bard. You know the lower. Forms well, of strictly speaking, um, I dance a lot. If y'all haven't seen, I'm we try not to. It. But um, but that's can that's we talk what about these ranked. sheets of paper? <laughs> Nobody's told me about them. I don't know what's going on. I went to look for magic things, and the guy threw me out twice. So, would it serve a good purpose, since Jarek is dying again, um, to go over the letters almost out of context or read through them, or would you guys just want to discuss them in general? Because um. I can kind of like summarize each one for you. We can read through them word by word. It's all up to how you guys want to handle it. I mean, since I've read them, we can kind of just like. Yeah, we have uh, all read so we can just summarize yeah. them. Yeah. Well, I will let someone spearhead that. Potentially not Jared, because he keeps dying. Or me, because we're not supposed to. Die. That Valorant would be a wonderful <laughs> option since he knows <laughs> how to talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> Seems you've been volunteered. You mean since I know how to read? <sighs> the burdens of the mighty are great, dear lord. He aggressively ignores Roly. Oh, also, side note, uh, I'm. This is like whispering to. Valoran. Are we not supposed to be, like, calling you Lord? Or anything? Preferably nothing. Okay. Okay. I'll just look at you when I want to talk to you until we engage in conversation. You don't even really have to do that, honestly. The burdens of the mighty are great, you're nothing. Oh, God. What have I done? 
Okay, anyways, can you hurry on? Taking taking a second to seethe <laughs> before talking about the notes. Um, he gets into the first note, the uh, September 9th year two GI. The journal entries. And um, I don't I don't want to read these word for word. Has anybody not read these? I don't. I think everyone's read them. Who's the slacker? Hey, I read them beforehand. <laughs> okay. You heard me read them. So this this uh, is an entry from an acolyte who has been tasked with trying to take one of the Toro Dan parts and seal it away somewhere, hide it somewhere, uh, considering the the worst, most difficult places he can try to think of. Um, and ending on perhaps a powerful being within the world, such as a dragon, uh, could be convinced to do it, but uh, how do you... They're, they're kind of like girls in that who knows how to talk to one. Um, and then... He finishes by saying that they're going to head into the marshes in the hopes of finding the timeless Zygarth the Knight. Did I say that properly? Yeah. Who would appear to be a dragon of some kind. Uh, and then the next note is written by someone else saying that he has uh, not not died but sacrificed himself in some vague way to safeguard this peace. If I got that basically right, Nathan? Yeah, it was a good, good synopsis. Um, something that would be kind of general knowledge for you. Uh, again, Ismiliath isn't really incredibly diverse. Um, the really only place that has a lot of thick marshes, at least to the extent that someone would refer to them and think that everyone who read it would know what they're talking about, uh, the Republic of Liamis, which is a faction kind of west of uh, Kralin and Giles' kingdom, holds a large, thick, mysterious marsh that kind of takes over the majority of that kind of faction kingdom republic, I guess is what it's actually called. Um, so that, you could probably assume that's the the martian question um just the what what region was that again uh the republic of liamis uh i'll go ahead and actually throw you guys to this real quick uh that is yeah. the republic of liamis so that is the where the marsh is and obviously the marsh is the majority of the center of it so, Ukin is a city that you guys have seen. Kralin is kind of just south of Ukin. So, that'll kind of give you a little perspective. Okay. And then, have any of us been here? Um, Valorant would have traveled through here on his way to uh, Roj Mazev, potentially. Um, Roly might have been through here. Jarek and Thor, probably not. I was gonna say, is this, is this mountain range over here? Is that the Serbat Mountains? Yeah, that's the the south part of the Serbat Mountains. Okay. Gotcha. I think this is this seems like the area that Jarek and Valoran were talking about at the top of the session too, or at least it has a heck of a lot in common with it. The Blackfields. Yeah. Okay. The second note is. Uh, Lezarine Vagdun of the House of Lanimus complaining to Master Cedric that a, a the remains of the Dark Prince quote unquote were not left with his family to guard but were instead sent to the Knights of the West uh, which Valoran believes is referring to some sort of group in the Kingdom of Folk. Mm -hmm. And he name drops 
Chevlar, who apparently was alive at the time that this note was written, uh, that this letter was sent, name drops Chevlar, uh, saying he's going to complain to him that his family was snubbed in this uh, apparently prestigious duty. The third note is the note from Braun to us saying Porter is up in the city of Northwatch, which I think we were told tonight is in the Purit Empire. So may he die horribly before we get there. And <laughs> lastly, uh, with great despair, I write this letter. A handful of keepers were moving one of the dark pieces to the vault and were set upon by horrible beasts. The thieves were tracked far south of the vault, past the black fields and into the woods beneath the mountains. The trail has gone cold and I fear the dark piece will never find its way to our hands again. So this... This would seem to over this in my mind would seem to overlap with the acolyte's journal from the first note. Uh, takes a tore dead piece, disappears into this marsh, looking for a dragon to uh, consult with. Meets an uncertain end, and later on the piece perhaps stolen from the vault wherever that is and taken into the woods beneath the mountains maybe not actually the same piece but sounds like they're all all these notes are kind of written about the same piece um, Both of these, not all of these but or you're cutting it out Probo, again, sir. Probo Seth. <laughs> uh, Valor, go ahead and roll me another history check as you're kind of going over the, the Knights of the West again, as you're kind of talking about it. Okay. Still kind of same thing. Like, every time you say it in your mind, you're like, God, I fucking know something about it. Kind of like nagging you a little bit. Okay. Uh, okay. Noted. Well, do we know anything about black fields? Uh, it's, it's kind of the same thing that I gave you guys at the beginning, is black fields, like if you're specifically thinking of like a genuinely black color field, um, the sledge fields around Kralin represent that. They're basically rice fields, but like a black tar instead of like water and rice, obviously. Um, so there is a large splotch of area uh, that resembles that description around Kralin, so you could assume it's that. Um, but that's kind of the first thing that comes to mind, at least in your travels. It says, um, past the black fields and into the woods beneath the mountains. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so lots of mountains, lots of woods. We have at least two different general areas to search. Uh, what about, okay, I guess I should say the same character. <laughs> so don't we don't we know of a vault do you think it's that vault the the vault that we couldn't get what? into isn't that down there is that in that location I don't remember you're talking about the, the fort yeah. Well, that was in the mountains. It wasn't in mm -hmm. the woods below the mountains. Yeah. Okay. The Delarus Heights Forum drawing on the map is like roughly there-ish. Maybe a little bit farther north, like there-ish. Kind of in the middle of the mountains. Ah. Oh. Is that the purple spot? The uh, red down in the south. That's where the the, the Delaris Height Fort was that you guys went to. That is not beneath the mountains. Yeah, so I my reading of it is that we've got Liamis to hunt in, but also like somewhere south of Dragon Cliff would also perhaps match up with this. And with then 
there is somewhere in your home. Um, not the not oh yeah yeah that's right the Knights of the West. So three areas. And to, to search. Do we know how many pieces there are of this two hundred foot tall man? I have a suspicion that it will be very few small pieces connected that then grow into the gigantic one. Yeah, no, I know. I just meant like, okay, yeah. I mean, are we looking for two arms, two legs, a head? Okay, so we found one of them, which is hopefully an arm or a leg. But we lost it. And then there's three more, which makes up an arm, a leg, and another arm. So are, are we missing? We're still missing one. I, I don't think that we can assume that it's necessarily body parts or that it accounts for a whole body. Come on, dude, this is Yu-Gi-Oh. We're building Exodia. Okay, well, maybe we just go off. Maybe we just find one. Because without them all, you cannot make a whole body, hopefully. So we're on track to head into Folk and find out who the Knights of the West are and if there's a piece there. And depending on how that goes, or maybe regardless of how that goes, south into Liamis to see about that piece. See, <laughs> JD, I was thinking about this and, uh, you know, friend is a dragon. I could ask him, but we'd have to go back. And, you know, if you had thought about this earlier, maybe, you know, we could, could go back. But uh, I don't think... Oh, sorry. I don't think that none of the notes say that they left it with a powerful being, right? It just says that they thought about it. <laughs> they wanted to. Yeah. So, I mean, we could always ask him about it, but I don't know that he would even know. Or he would, he may not even know that he knows. Question. Would anybody know um, where the origins of the name Dragon Cliff Mines came from? Yeah, we discussed that way back yeah. in uh, session one. Um, it was, it's told that long ago, uh, all the various like caves and um, like, you know, burrows or holes uh, in the side of the mountain that they actually like built the town on were old dragon caves and layers of the sort. Um, that's what a lot of the like, gold and jewelry that they actually mined was is finding old forgotten dragon hordes and then digging them up and bringing them out um it's been a long time since dragons have been like actually there um to the point where a lot of times they just kind of assume it was like a myth or kind of a misinterpretation or something of that sort um, but that's where it got its name and that's kind of like the the appeal of that town What they did, uh, what did get me thinking was that somebody, you know, sacrificed themselves, right? Or something like that. He would be remembered, yada, yada, yada. So I was kind of wondering if Dragon Friend was that guy. Because it said something about not remembering anything, right? Can't remember. I don't know. You people talk very fast. Well, it wouldn't be worth asking about anyway. And he was enjoyable enough. He was very pleasant. Your little stick friend might enjoy a homecoming. Yeah, I don't know that. I don't know if Carl really cares about. Well, he does like swings, apparently. We just like in the back of your mind, you're just here. I miss Big. Yeah, I miss Big too. I mean, what? <laughs> 
Yeah, we should uh we should definitely pay him a visit on our way back, I guess. So we have to go up anyways. I don't know, I can't I don't know how we he doesn't have a gem. Also side note, I did talk to, yep. to Braun about a gem. Mm -hmm. Has it been a week? No, you guys have been traveling for three days. Okay. Just making a mental note that whenever it's a week, I want to see if I can tell him things. Okay. It's important. <laughs> and if... Um, if I don't hear back within a week, then I'm going to send a message to Croak to tell him to give the stone back to Duke Braun. Okay. Because that's more important than a crazy murder rampage in JD's town. <laughs> <laughs> that letter just says my name my name will be forgotten, but the world will remember my sacrifice. I I don't Yeah, I didn't know if that was like, you know because he forgot a lot of things, he didn't remember his own name. That's the only thing I was thinking about. Uh, one bit of information that you guys would know, like in character, um, especially with the journal that's dated, um, it's about 350 GE right now. So the journals and letters and whatnot that you're looking at potentially are kind of all from around that time of two or three GE. So it's been about 300 odd years um, with some of this information. But even the dates on those are like two years after that great event, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that happened pretty soon after whatever. You go ahead and roll me a history check, Jarek. And you guys by no means have to, like, come to any sort of conclusion with this conversation. I just kind of wanted to make sure the conversation was had. So, <laughs> lucky die. Uh, yeah. So, uh, at any point, if you want to, like, break away from this, you can. But I enjoy the the melting pot. Yes. Giving the DM ideas is always fun. <laughs> Good job, Jarek. A+. Plus. You have another lucky uh, guy, by the way, that you're definitely not going to use today. Can you use a lucky die twice on one roll? I have no idea. I don't think you can. No, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Jarek, if you try and think back to any sort of like folk tale or song or nursery rhyme, uh, nothing would really refer to anything close to this that will like, catch your attention. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of up to what you guys want to do at this point you've been kind of drinking throwing ideas around kind of looking over the notes for maybe like you know 20 minutes or so and uh nobody's like hardcore watching us right no not to your knowledge everyone's you know just kind of going about their daily business dwarves like to drink a fair bit it's kind of what they do so it's true Are you guys ready to uh, keep going, or Rolly, are you, you good, not good? Well, I still would like to visit um, my uh, the shrine to the mother, but right. you guys don't have to accompany me with that. You can stay here if you wish. <laughs> you well, guys know early. <laughs> right. I think uh uh JD maybe we should, you know, come along with Rolly, chat them up a little bit. Uh Rolly, something that I think JD is trying to uh get out, but he's a little too drunk. Um what's going on in your hometown, do you know? It's part of why I came here was to see what was going on before uh, going back. It's been some time and well, yes, it's been some time. Also, you're kind of like famous. 
I'm not famous, so it's more the name, really. I mean, nobody goes around saying, hey, Thor, I know you, here's a free drink. I mean, that one guy did, but he just... He I just was going to say, you, um, you got two free drinks today, I only got one, so... Oh, well, okay, but that was... But he didn't know my name. She knew your name. It's different. <laughs> also, he was a dwarf. I think dwarves just give people drinks a lot. We do, don't we? But uh, really, <sighs> yes. We are here for you, however you need. Well, thank you. Um, would come in quite handy in a fight, really. Yes. I think you might be talking to the purse, the guy, the big barrel chest sitting behind you, but yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I would, um, I'd go to, um, the Shrine of the Mother. Okay. Um, so I imagine at being a, you know, a cleric of the Mother and being through here before that you've gone to the Shrine, uh, yep. in this little part of town. Um, so what it is, there is, the majority of the town, you know, especially on the coast is, you know, kind of a, a rolling hill, shoreline kind of thing. But it appears that the dwarves that have come here have made what almost resembles like a giant, small, that's, that, that's not how that works, a mini replica of a mountain, kind of, uh, near the far side of this little district. It's a lot of giant boulders and gravel and rubble that have kind of been piled up into this giant mass of stone. It's obviously quite old because, you know, various bits of like grass and nature have kind of like grown on top of it. And it almost kind of looks like a small diorama of the mountains that you're used to, you know, living and functioning in. And then there's been a, like a small section of like carved out on the inside. Uh, with a shrine of the mother placed in there uh, and then various kind of like mementos from the travelers over all the years that have come here You know leaving little bits, you know, you know having their little uh, rituals and ceremonies and like candles and kind of knickknacks and Notes and whatnot kind of being left in this cave almost giving it like this giant uh, Almost like a geocache of the mother's trinkets uh, in this little like small area it's maybe only like a 10 foot by 10 foot like carved out uh domed room uh in the center Rolla, you would be you know familiar with this the symbol of the mother is very much prevalent through all aspects of the the religion itself so the shrines that you'll usually find um are just large stone uh representations of the symbol they wouldn't have the um the actual emeralds in them because then you'd be talking about like foot tall emeralds um but it's like a stone replica of the emerald uh, symbol that you carry around and wield, um, kind of on top of a elegant, well-crafted uh, bronze and gold and steel uh, like stand, like a decorative stand, more or less. Um, so that's kind of what you would go to to reach out to the mother. Okay. Um, is there anybody else in there, or is it just vacant at the moment? Um, when you go up, you probably see, like, a group of two kind of coming out, but, you know, it's kind of an unwritten rule that, like, if someone's in there using it, it's almost like a porta potty Yeah, you don't go in there and try and use it at the same time. Unless right. yourself. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and, uh... Oh. I, was just, I was just gonna say, like, I would be outside, and I would just kind of see if I could get an idea of what's going on in this city just like talking to people seeing what issues they have or like any other current issues that are going on that we should, may want to be aware of okay uh just give you oh i got an investigation check then yeah so roll are you going in alone to pray yes Absolutely. is there anything you're reaching for any questions you're asking any sort of goal with this yeah um I'm um, nervous about seeing my, don't know if I would call her X or not, and um, just asking that that goes well and that um, 
I'd, I would pray for uh, each of the individual members of the party. Uh, you know that uh, she help us and you know Valorin to get his his uh, wealth restored so that he can go on for, and then uh, for Thor to be able to come to peace with uh, with his mother and for Jarek to. Um, be able to find some resolution with with dog. <laughs> so okay, just you know, the, kind of the general things that popped in my mind for each of them, and then, uh, and then just praying that the the return is a good one because of the various issues I have back home. Okay, um, so you'll be in there for you know, I'm assuming a fair bit, kind of going through all this and yeah. getting it all felt out. Um, so Thor, try and give me a little bit more of what you're looking for. Like, are you looking for like problems in this city? Uh, just kind of a general feel of like the, the world around this city. Um, like what are you actually looking for? Uh, I, I rolled with Bench cause I was using JD cause I appreciate him offering to help. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I kind of like, you know, looking for rep in a town. You just want to know like what their problems are like mm -hmm. you know oh i need like we've been having a problem with this or um like kind of ways to help out other people or things that they've seen things that they've heard that can maybe help us on our journeys or help us to you know mm -hmm. make um, more money <laughs> okay so still kind of functioning within the more like dwarven side of the city um a lot of what you would hear is kind of like trade uh whispers and mumblings like these people travel back and forth between bronchar and here very frequently that's kind of like their sole purpose and a lot of their you know energy goes into that um so you hear various things you know some of them not being so interesting like you know the prices of stuff or certain shops you know not accepting things and stuff that like doesn't really pertain to you um Maybe something notable that would point out is they complain a lot about the, like the woodlands and the passage beneath the mountains, um, just past the kind of outpost town that they stop at first, um, is getting more and more infested with kind of, uh, goblinoid creatures and the like, um, the, the rumors that you would hear is kind of like the slacking of, um, the Giles military or uh, nobles or lords uh, not, you know, controlling their land enough and uh, that, you know, a good old dwarven uh, mountain party would, you know, clear that right up and that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's probably the most relevant rumor you would stir up. And goblins in which part? Of um, they're referring to, let me go ahead and draw you something. Uh, Around here, uh, uh, yes. there's, <laughs> yeah, roughly has been a lot of, uh, like, ambushes, attacks, uh, like, just sightings, that kind of thing. Okay. So. I would relate, well, JD would obviously know this because he was with <laughs> me, but mm -hmm. I'd relay that to eye contact, man. Uh-huh. Um, um, if I'm coming through, yep. uh, upon learning such things, I think Jarek would start to play as they walked and kind of belt out a few verses of how affordable and effective the Golden Heart group <laughs> is and readily available for hire. Um, uh, and how they have business in the West. You're trying to hire. fish for a escort to Bronchard, escorting someone to Bronchard. Uh, anything that'll get us money, but yeah, sure, <laughs> that would. Uh... It's kind of where I was at too. Okay. <laughs> um. Hmm. Roll me <laughs> persuasion. Uh, Valor, what are you doing at this point? Where are you? So, uh, not not meaning to retcon, uh, just wasn't a great time to buddy in. Uh, 
Uh, after leaving the bar in the Dwarven Quarter, he would have rummaged in the wagon and then slipped away. Okay. So, um, Rolly, as you are still deep in your prayer, you know, kind of like going through the various, uh, like stories and, uh, verses and whatnot that you've been taught in your, your youth, you hear light footsteps kind of coming up behind you. Um, as you like glance behind you, you see this very old elderly female dwarf. Uh, she's kind of like walking with a cane, you know, long white hair. Uh, she has a little bit of a beard going on, hasn't shaved in a little bit. Um, but she's kind of like plodding down the entrance towards you, her eyes kind of downcast at the floor. Um, uh, eventually as she gets like just behind you, she kind of like swaps the, the cane to the other hand and reaches out with the, the now empty one and places it on your shoulder, lifting her eyes and like looking directly into yours and she goes, Come home, son. And then, like, her eyes drop again. And you see almost, like, a visible shift in her demeanor. Like, somewhat of the strength of her step kind of fades. She, like, sags a little bit. Her shoulders kind of slip. Her her neck kind of cranes a little more. She leans on the cane a little bit. Um, and then, like, looks around and looks at you and... Apologies. And turns around and begins to make her way out. Would I have recognized that as something supernatural? Yeah, it's a pretty easy assumption to make. Yeah, I wouldn't bother her further then. Uh, when she said that, did it sound like... Like, when she said son, was, was there any way to infer whether that was, like, just... So, uh, the members of your church are often referred to as the sons or a son, uh, cause you are a son of the mother. Um, that applies to the whole dwarven race, but it's kind of used to refer to, uh, your yeah. religion more or less. Um, so you could take it that way. Um, probably the most likely, uh, answer to the situation you're in. Um, so that's probably what you kind of gather from that. Just look at, at, after her walking away, you know. That was the plan. What? Uh, room's ready. I'm I'm just leaving now. All yours. Okay. So uh, you come out, and I guess uh, Jarek and Thor are milling about the area, kind of around you. Uh, Jarek trying his best to sell yourselves to the highest bidder, and seeing very little success as a lot of the sailors and merchants and general workers just kind of like wave him away as some bumbling human who's in the wrong spot um yeah and then valoran seems to be missing oh, well that wraps up everything i need to do and unless you guys are thirsty then we can get more where, where did um where did valoran go we're not supposed to say his name i don't know where he went did we um, did we see him leave, or did he just pop? How, how stealthy were you trying to be, Valoran? Not not full on sneaking, but mm -hmm. not saying anything before he left. I would say it's reasonable that he, he slipped away without you guys noticing. No idea. Um, he was at the tavern, and. Then we came here. Um, as you are talking, Adam, who's just kind of like been bringing the wagon around with you and kind of just keeping an eye on that, is like, well, he, uh, he, he grabbed something from the wagon and then he took off. What did he grab? I, I didn't look. Which direction did he go? Uh, that way. Are you sure? Not really. Adam, it's your job to know things and then never say anything. I was talking to one of the people who was using the cranes. It's really cool. I've never seen a crane before. Very what? cool, this. You live in the harbor town. Okay. Yeah. So we did we make camp outside of town? I can't even... No, we, we, no, oh, no. We just we're, we're rolling through. Yeah, rolling through. <laughs> so we So Valorant, is there something that you're doing currently? Well we don't have a 
a a place to go back to to wait for him. Nope. Mm. You do have whistles. And we haven't established where we're even staying for the night. Nope. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh... Yeah, Valorant, are you doing something at this point? Like, is there something yeah. you're... Okay. You wanna... What is it? Hit me. So, uh... Getting out of sight of the rest of the group and then riding at a trot, um... He does a, a loop around a block on uh, as he goes to see if he's got a tail. Mm -hmm. And then he returns to Aldous's. Uh, I think I know where. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so you can easily make it across town, uh, kind of going by the, the direction you just came, uh, and make it back to the kind of weird cottage, kind of wrapped in dead branches. And uh, so, uh, go up to the door, dismount, go to the door, and politely knock on the door. Okay. Knocker knocking on the door. Sorry, what? Are you using the knocker, or are you knocking on the door? Oh, the knocker. Okay. Yeah, so you, you do what you kind of saw Thor do initially. Uh, the eye kind of twisting from the metal, and the, the iron uh, eyelids opening. Uh, the eye kind of searching a little bit, and then finding you, it goes, What?! I'm not here to waste your time. You'll want to see this. That's what I like. And you see the door open and the, the eye shift away. I head inside. <laughs> okay, so you'd see the familiar sight you saw earlier this day. The, the elderly gentleman floating towards you across the pile of stuff. Uh, he's already preemptively kind of shifting the, the flesh monocle over his eye. I heard you tell the other one. That you're more of a collector, and the sale the sales are incidental. That about sums it up, yeah. Has anyone ever stolen anything from your collection? No. Insight. Okay. He certainly believes that true. Obviously, I don't know if that's true, but he certainly believes it. I have something here that I know is one of a kind. I was there when it came into being. And he's like he uh he takes this ratty bundle and unwraps blood cleaver. Mm hmm. As he was like looking down and sees you unwrap it, you see like a kind of curious look cross because now he's seeing the you know the blood dripping from the blade that you had seen when you used uh, the telescope one on it. And he's like No. Really? C can I? May I? Go ahead. He like gently scoops it out of the blanket and kind of like looks at it, like looks it up and down. He's like, Have you used it? No. Hmm. You see him, like, lift it up, and to you, you can't quite see what's going on, but from the kind of way he's holding it, you would almost imagine he's, like, letting the blood drip from the sheath and, like, pull in his hand, and he's like, hmm. Are you looking to sell this item? I suppose I am. But How it much is, do you course... want, sir? Well, it's... One of a kind. Exclusive. Dangerous. It must not fall into ignorant hands. You were, like... you were prepared to trade Thor something worth 7,000 gold for his sword. Well, his sword had quite the history. It's, uh, Quite famous. This one isn't famous, but it does have quite the history. 
And so that changes the value how? Well, if I put this on my wall, no one will know what it is. But it is interesting. It is stuff. Give me an offer. I believe I have. Hmm. 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 Give me persuasion. I knew it. <laughs> Let me see real quick. Yep. Okay. Um, all is right with the world. Uh, what is your name? Marcus. Strong name. For a strong lad. 3,500. Five. Thirty-five is a stretch. This is the only one of its kind in all the world, sir. A villain. And I'm the only one in all the world that would give you thirty-five for it. A village was slaughtered. Merely to bring this into our plane. Four. It's as high as I will go. I want it in platinum. Deal. Deal. He kind of, like, does the same gesture that brings the bag up to him. And you see him almost, like, petting the sword in his grip. Kind of just, like, very gently kind of stroking it. Before the bag comes over, he begins to start picking platinum out of it. Uh, and he would hand over 400 platinum to you. I hope that it finds a long... A long-lasting home on display on your wall. It will add tremendously to my stuff. I appreciate you delivering it to me. I bid you good day, Mr. Aldous. And you, Marcus. And I'm out of there. Okay. So you're now 400 platinum richer. I guess we just leave will... without them. Sorry. And I'll uh, and I'll head. I'll head uh, as fast as I can safely ride. To uh, to catch up with the rest of the group. Okay. Uh, so as you guys would kind of be like, what? I don't know where the fuck he'd go. Uh, Valorant comes riding back upon Belgrees into the like workyard area. Oh. Hello. Where did you go? Sightseeing. We won't be back this way for a long time. I wanted to get my full sight of Free Sight City. Adam Why said you retrieve something from the car, Tub. I was hungry. No, I didn't. Adam, this isn't the time. What was that? Adam was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> he, he kind of well, cut um, eyes at, he cuts eyes at the gnome, and then he says, I was hungry. Yes. I'd like to insight check, Mr. Go you for it. I want to. <laughs> uh, Valor, are you attempting to deceive them, I imagine? No. Okay. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, really? <laughs> Let's go! Better the role. Plus eight, and I get a ten. I mean, so you're not attempting to. I was hungry. Is is flat? 
and frowny and clearly an excuse. Okay. Same with the joyriding. <laughs> okay. Pretty much. When have you ever known Valoran to do such a thing? <laughs> You're right, Valoran doesn't have joy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I pull uh I I pull Valoran to the side. Off his horse. I I mean I would just go over to his horse. <laughs> just messing with and just tell him uh He doesn't fight it. Uh, I understand you have your reasons, and I won't pry, but if you're being followed and you're in danger, you should not leave us like that again. I don't expect I will. What did you go do? Sightseeing. Have it your way. Thank you. Um. Ah. Well, if y'all are done having your hugs and kisses, um. Before we get out of town, there is one thing I would like to do. If y'all don't mind. I, uh, I just need to see maybe a, a artificer, 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 <laughs> artificer, um, and see if they may have the ability to uh, build me a contraption. What? You want them to build it for you today? Well, I mean, I just want to see if it's possible. JD, I had a simple sheath design, and I was told it would take like three days. No, I, I know that. Just, you know, I think it's possible, but probably it's maybe. Bring us out, All right. Sure, well, you're I'm making good. no sense whatsoever. You're babbling in tongues, but go to your artificer and see if they can make sense of whatever the hell you're saying is. You know, maybe we should keep going, and then we give you a little workout by making you catch up. It's more of a workout for the horse, but okay. No, we'll keep the horse. No, what? <laughs> so you want to seek out an artificer, Jarek? Yes. Okay. And, um... Before going there, I will take the cask of whatever sparky juice is available with me. Mm hmm. You're gonna kill us all. When have I been known to make bad decisions regarding the health and safety of the party? I think we'll find out in five to ten years. Uh, okay. So yeah, I would, I would seek out someone. Okay, um, if you ask around, uh, it is pretty quickly pointed out to you that in the the dwarven uh, district there is a shop called Toran's Tinkering Tools, which is a more or less what you could potentially are looking for. Uh, so. Jarek would enter and uh, see if the proprietor is around. Okay. Um, so what you're approaching is kind of like a one of those almost like blacksmith kind of forge open shop kind of buildings. Uh, the majority of the front of it's kind of you know open with like various tools and weird mechanical instruments that you don't you know recognize or know what they do. Uh, there's like a smaller like closed off structure kind of farther deeper into the shop. Um, that you imagine houses, you know, the shop itself and potentially the owner. Um, but as you walk in, you see that there's almost a bit of automation in the shop going on as you approach, you know, tools and conveyor belts and kind of uh, random, like, almost machine punchers are kind of actively going as you come in. Uh, 
Hello. As you shout, you there's like a, a small door set into the, the closed off structure and it kind of like swings open wide as a guy is like a giant burly dwarf uh, with one arm is kind of hugging to his chest this like bundle of metal rods and he comes like coming out of he comes coming out he comes like swaggering out of the the building kind of looking at you like yeah what i need to see if i might be able to commission um something very specific and possibly very unique you know, give me details Yes, yes, um, and Jarek will bring over his, uh, cask of sparky juice and lift it up, or lift it open. Uh, I found that this ooze is extremely flammable. I was wondering if possibly you could create something that would spray it or eject it at the same time igniting it, uh, for us to use in battle. Kind of looks at you a little bit cockeyed and like moves beside you to kind of like place all the metal rods down where they were going. And he looks at you and then looks at the, what is it, a, like a bucket or a barrel that you're holding? Uh, I assume a cask. Small okay. one. Yeah. yeah. He's like, sticks his finger in it. Ugh. I guess. But it, it, it certainly takes some time. You gotta like, Figure out all the mechanics of it. Hmm. Uh, Are you okay? I, uh, you drinking this shit? No, 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 no. Um, just a little dust from the road. Um, how um how long do you think that would take? It depends on how much money I want to get out of you. I am willing to pay a fair price for fair work. That usually means that you're about to lie to me, but... Mm. I don't know if you can afford my daily rate, sir. Well, you know, I don't have all the time in the world on this, and I would never hire anyone who's just going to lay about. Yeah, because you How apparently I... have the monopoly on that, sir. Oh, fucking brutal. Um, <clears throat> look, I can pay you 75 gold. Per day? To begin to, to no. For the project. <laughs> so this this is gonna take me at least a month just to figure out and then to assemble it. I don't, I don't even know. We're not talking about materials yet. I I see. I have sought an apprentice when I should have sought a master. Uh, thank you so much. Enjoy your day. Yeah, you're not welcome. Have fun. <laughs> um, mm, okay, and I'll take my leave. <laughs> okay. Head back to the group. That is there anything? <laughs> oh, well, Jarek's have another stream. It That's fine. If there's anything, yeah. <laughs> is there anything the party is doing at this point? I was, but I was set on leaving. Okay. I, I'm. I thought. We were, did you get? Are you okay with Rolly? Are you prepared to leave? You're good to go now. Finished what I needed uh, quite some time ago. Okay. Well, I told JD we we would leave him behind, so I feel like we should just leave him behind. Be kind to him. Let's uh, if we are going to move forward, let's do it slowly. Give him a fighting chance to catch up. I don't know that his horse could catch up, but, you know, if we can give it the fighting chance, I guess we'll, we'll try. Okay. Slowly, Adam. Onward. 
Okay. So you're gonna depart Freeside City? Yes, with the hopes that JD catches up to us before you know he gets lost. So is the the trip that you guys are taking up to Northstone and then west to Bronchard? We discussed goblin attacks at that route. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is the route taken by, like, travelers uh, from Bronchard to here. Um, so there's nothing to say that you would avoid that by going another route. It's just that's the actively traveled route with information. Okay. I'm sure. Yeah, it sounds good to me. Okay. So I assume Jarek would be, like, kind of catching up with the group as they're reaching, like, the edge of the city. Um, kind of heading off the north road and, you know farther away, uh, reconvening more or less. Um, is there any sort of uh, tasks or anything or conversations that you guys want to be having while traveling? Uh, it will take you about two days to Northstone and then another two or three days west to the, the town, uh, the bottom of the mountain, and then maybe another day or two up to Bronchard from there. So that's kind of the time frame you're looking at? Um, are you asking for activity for that whole like five days or however well i mean just kind of chain of events like i'm not saying that we're going to skip over these five days but that's kind of the journey you're setting upon um so like if there's things that you want to be doing during that time or conversations you want to have during that time um you can figure that out now i suppose uh, i'll definitely use the crown of memories more when someone else already isn't <laughs> using it uh including <laughs> Like, still studying Salomon, but now also adding whatever this memory is that I have of reading about Knights of the West. Okay. And I would like, uh, sometime before Bronze Shard, I'd like to use the, the Crown of Memories and uh, think back to the last, uh, well, I mean, I guess I could get with you on what I would think about. But okay. Yeah. Um, I um, go ahead. Oh, uh, I'd like to study Rolly's brewing supplies. I guess the, mm -hmm. the whatever. What do you call that thing? Uh, the distiller, whatever. Anyways, I look mean, at the look at the pieces and try and see if I can figure out fluid dynamics. And if. I discerned for one moment <laughs> that going to use it for anything other than brewing alcohol, I would probably throw a boot in his ample ass. No, 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 Roly, put that down. I'm, I'm just looking at it. I'm trying to figure out how it that, forces the liquid through one area to the my next. My great grandfather, that does not to be used for your tinkering with your flamey goop. No, no, I'm not going to change anything. I'm just trying to see how it works. Pressure. Yeah, uh, and for as usual, you're making no sense again. You'd... As he's uh, berating, you see Adam kind of coming behind Rolly, trying to work his shoe off. He's like, yeah, that's his grandfather's. <laughs> <laughs> But that does bring to mind, um, Adam. Yes. Have you thought any more about improvements to your last batch of ale? Well, I thought that we agreed that we would do your, your recipe next. See how that went. My recipe will be there. It's not going anywhere. I was thinking I, I didn't want to stifle your curiosity and your newfound passion for the art of brewing, so... We'll continue on with your magnum opus. You know, I think if we corner the market on energizing ale, that might be something. You're quite a monster. Um, yes. I think there might be something there. I've been thinking of how to market it. Maybe it gives you the strength of a bull. Hmm. It's a bang on idea. Well, 
forget marketing. The, the product comes first. Just make sure that it's sound. I mean, ale as it is is normally relaxing, and you're getting it to speed you up, so. We'll work on it. I'll get another batch going while we go. Yes. Uh, I can't because I'm video recording. <laughs> so I want to whisper you. <laughs> so Valorum, we'll go ahead and play out your little uh, crowd of memories, looking back at the Knights of the West specifically, because uh, that will function and fit and kind of help you. Um, so can I assume you'd be doing this, you know, kind of beginning your journey leaving Freeside City? Since it's kind of fresh on your mind. Okay. Um, so, you know, any of the given nights that you stop and camp set up and the crowd of memories isn't being passed around um, like a bong at a party, um, you, you know, get your chance to kind of settle with it and think back. And it's difficult because you aren't thinking of a memory clearly in your mind. You're more or less kind of like trying to recall that one specific kind of nagging visual that you keep being given. Um, so you put it on and you eventually feel yourself being pulled into the now familiar kind of white void that fills your vision before the, the memory brings up. And then you are brought to the attic of uh, uh, the manor of Corsay. Is it Corsay? Is that how you say it? That's right. Yeah. Um, and it, it's a very, you know, dingy and, you know, dark room. There's no windows or anything. Uh, it's just a plethora of boxed up goods and equipment kind of strewn all over the, the kind of cr crickety, crickety uh, wooden floor of the, the upper level. And you have a, like a big tome kind of splayed out in your lap and you're more or less just kind of glancing through it. Uh, you're not reading it word from word. You're attempting to really kind of like focus on it and read through it, but you found yourself just getting kind of bored from the monotony of the terribly kind of paced uh, story or information that's kind of being uh, told. But eventually you do find that um, the phrase, the Knights of the West, and you kind of begin to piece together both as your younger self and older self in this kind of weird mixture of like a collective hive mind uh, that the Knights of the West is a term used for an order that you are involved in. Um, it used to be kind of the old name and it isn't one to one the same order, but yours kind of stems from it in some ways. Some of the records and people and stories and functioning is kind of drawn from it so that would be kind of the gist i can get you a little bit more of like finite information on that but that would be what you would gather from that interaction or that memory gotcha gotcha uh <laughs> uh yeah sure i said it's fine you want to kind of retro that real quick okay you want to do anything with that now or is that a later thing no, I can do it now. Uh, okay. How much would that have cost? Small amount. It won't even matter. Okay. Um, just whenever we make camp next. Okay. Whenever. So, Valorant, are you doing anything with that information, or are you sitting on that? Um, just sitting on it for right now. Okay. So I guess Thor, we can hop over to you. You know, next night you guys are traveling. Everything's kind of settling down. <clears throat> yes, I would uh, first like to cast Speak with Animals. Okay. Um, or Ritual cast it, because that's the only way I can do it. And then... Uh, James slash Valorant, is Belgris normally near you when you're... Like, at camp? He, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he is. Okay. Uh, well, I would try the whisper so that Valorant can't hear him. <laughs> can't hear me, okay. I guess. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, Bell Grease. You see his head left. He was you're kind of grazing at the time and like lock eyes with you. Come here, come here. I have, I have, I have, I have the things. What things? And I'll, uh, I'll just like slowly dig out and I'll just flash it to him. You see his eyes kind of grow a little bit wider and like his big thick like horse tongue come out and kind of like slather his lips 
and he kind of like freezes and his ears kind of point a little bit down towards you. It's like, Sir, I acquire what you have. Yeah, yeah. If you would so please. Yeah, so I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna leave it here for you and you just casually come over here and take it. He doesn't make any moves towards you. He seems to be kind of like mulling it over in his head for the moment. So I'm just gonna drop it on the ground and just walk away. <laughs> okay. So, um, are you just like leaving the, the situation entirely? For now, yes. Like, I'll watch it from a distance, but... Okay. So as you walk away, uh, Valor, are you in your tent at this point? If it's, like, bedtime, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm assuming you're doing this later in the evening, Thor? Yeah, it wouldn't be, like, bedtime and just be, like, you know, when we're all chilling. Okay. Well, Valor, if you are in your tent, we'll go with that assumption. Um, okay. You know, doing whatever you're doing. Uh, you would see the kind of the shadow of Belgris kind of cast on your tent for a second before you kind of hear, like, the heavy... Uh, hooves hitting the dirt and then like the sound of his head kind of sliding against the cloth and eventually you see his nose kind of like pushing the the flap away a little bit and he like sticks his massive head into the tent with you oh welcome my boy what into <laughs> what do i owe this visit he like cranes his neck and goes like her her all right, show me. And so he like brings his out. massive head out of the flap and he turns around and you see him like raising his hoof and kind of beating the ground in the direction of the beat that has been left about five or so feet away from you. Oh, I see. Somebody left you a present. I, I must apologize. I, I'm so sorry. I slipped my mind. I'll uh, reach down and pick one up and look it over. Mm -hmm. It appears to be a beat. A little bit dirty from being put on the ground. I'll, uh... I'll pick him up and brush the dirt off of him and feed him to him myself. Okay. So, Thor, as you are watching this transaction, uh, as Belgris begins to devour the beats very happily, you just consistently keep hearing, Oh... Yes! Oh! Yes! Yes! <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm laying against uh, Buffy with kind of like that, you know, when you're a kid and you have your eyes <laughs> closed, uh -huh. but they're open. I'm kind of mm -hmm. doing that, just watching. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll look around to see if I see Thor. Imagine you would be able to, yeah. Yes. And uh, whether I can tell his eyes are open or not, and just sort of give one nod, <laughs> kind of like, hmm. And then turn my attention back to Belgrees. Thor would be trying to hold in a laugh from the comments that <laughs> your horse is making. So, probably tell that he was awake. And I'll pat him while he's snacking and say, I, I'm sorry, boy. I'll I'll remember myself next time. This kind of like gives you a little like side soft body slam in return. Like a soft little gesture of like, it's okay. That's all I got. Is, okay. Uh, is there anything else that you would be starting talking about interactions, things of that nature during this time. <laughs> okay. Um, certainly don't have enough time to really start anything at this point. Um, so this might be the time to kind of start winding the session down. Um, are there any, like, questions or systems or money or things of that nature that we could... We'll work through talk about anything needs to be brought up. Uh, how do judges probably yep. bounce? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Hawking, you're going to need to repeat the question. Your computer 